running here in the four corners maiden. Right out to the lead is the Vault Legend Swamp Thing. Followed by Good Gravy and Jackie Brown closely for third. Break of two, that's Mr. Mint Chestnut in fourth. Digging in, but it's all Pandora player with a half length lead. Cheesy Hair is digging in, giving it all. She's got Captain, but it's Cheesy Hair. And look out from the back. It's Bubba Kush at the wire, but not going to get him. It's Pandora player over Bubba Kush and Cheesy Tortilla. What's up, my homie homies and fellow horse racing fans? It's time for another weekend of racing, a Saturday night, and tonight we have a very special race. We got the third time derby race getting ready to go down in just a couple of minutes, so we started a little bit early. As always, we got the unofficial voice of Photo Finish Live Racing, the one and only Mo Nose in the house. What's up, Mo? How are we doing tonight? Yo, what up, Vault? What up, chat? It's Foles Day, baby. Ready to roll? That's true. It's Saturday. Every Saturday is the end of one season and the start of another. So if you have any horses that are pregnant, like one of uh, actually my best horse, that horse will give birth today in about four minutes, three minutes. And then uh, if you have any horses that are almost eligible to race some of those foals, you got to wait two seasons before they can race. If this is their second season waiting, then they'll get to race for the first time. So we're going to have a lot of new horses uh, being born today and we're gonna have a lot of new horses racing for the first time as well what's up everybody in the chat thanks for hanging out with us tonight at saturday night at the races we got bradley marion here we got the one and only true stoner we got mason fuzzy in the house says what are the top five most undervalued vb collectibles in your opinion did you say vb collectibles this is photo finish live but no i could probably come up with five undervalued <laughs> ones it would take me a minute what's up bd hinders in the house time for the derby let's see what all horses are in this race of course i know a lot of people are probably putting their money on brad this super horse with 20 races and 15 wins we watched him i'm sorry her we watched her uh win a race last night i think it was a sprint too and uh, we didn't. I didn't think uh, she was gonna win it because it was a sprint, and she was looked like she was winning more distance races. But just like Mo No said, this horse is so strong that it can win at any distance. Let's see if this horse is gonna win the Derby. It's got to go up against Shoney CEO from Drop Stable. We got Amber Ray from OEB. You got Community Legend from SoCal Stables. Marcelo from Golden Stables. You got Glenn Faba from YSM Racing Club. Atlas from Amazing Stable. Stable Amazing amazing stables we got Fenella from ysm racing club that's the i think half sister to bride the one that almost beat bride in a race last night we got uh cover mm -hmm. of horse from cover of horse we got desert eagle from wolof the bandito we got rainbow avalanche from la playa farms sadie from miami nation fomo again from miami nation miami nation's got two horses in this race we got delmos from balthazar mangers Derby winner is the name of this horse in the Derby race. I would expect it to possibly win. I mean, that's it's named for it. From Dryney Park, we got Andreas from YSM Racing Club, Stardust from Grape Syndicate, and Scott Street from Holly Woo Stables. So this is going to be an action-packed race right here. Uh, let me get it all set up so that Mo can call it here in about 30 seconds when it begins. Oh, it's not going to let me do it from the main page, Mo, because there's a race already going on. No, I won't for these. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. just uh, Oops. yeah, keep that third time derby page open like you had. Yeah, we'll have to do it from right here. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit different for these. Yeah, All right, guys. I'm gonna like full screen it with like three seconds race. left, so. It's race time. Whoops. Sorry about that. <laughs> Oh, I think we got rugged. Or I got rugged. My race is starting up. Do you mean to Yeah, it just always happens when the races overlap, man. Yeah, no, I got I got nothing. Oh no, and it's the derby yeah. race too. This is the big one. You can't you come back. It's in. when races overlap, man. They just yeah. don't nope. All right guys, well they're off. I guess this come one on. I'm gonna have to pull one out of here and try to pull a mow on this one on the third time derby race too sorry guys if i'm not too good at this but you got andreas leading the pack right now you got sadie in second place delmos is in third just got passed by stardust from the grape syndicate stable uh, it looks like after that we got wolof's 
Horse Desert Eagle in fourth place. Just got passed up by Community Legend, but it's Andreas currently leading. Just got a passed by Stardust. This is a 10 furlong race, so it's somewhat of a distance race. All right, let's see. We got Sadie following Stardust. You got a horse there on the inside coming up strong. That's Community Legend, the number four horse. Looks like he's got a lot of power. That's a 5.14. That might be your favorite of this race. A lot of horses in this race. <clears throat> Excuse me, I wasn't expecting to call this race. A 99 to one shot, uh, Sadie, the number 12 horse, just took the lead. But we still got a while to go. We're in the back stretch right here. This is where I'm supposed to come up with some crazy wild voice. Um, I don't know, I can't do Schwarzenegger. I, I'm, I don't have any special voice. You're lucky to get a call from me right now. Look at Derby winner here. Here's a long shot. Derby winner starts to pull up to the front of the pack. Was in third for a second, starting to fade now. We got Desert Eagle in the front as they head around the final turn. Getting ready to go into the back stretch. Looking for a horse to make a run now for the third time derby. This is the big one, y'all. Whoever wins this is going to be a happy camper. Right now it's Sadie in front. Marcelo is in second. We got Delmos. We got 101 to shot trying to make a move. But right now it's Sadie still by length. We got Marcelo still chasing. We got Stardust chasing. But you got a whole lot of horse there moving up. They're moving up at the last second. I think Sadie's going to be fading. It's anybody's race at this point. You got Delmos, a long shot on the outside. Is Delmos going to upset everybody? I think he is. Wow. I think that's Balthazar Manger. Shout out to Balthazar Mangers with a surprise win. The Delmos horse. Stardust takes second. How'd I do, Mo? That's all I got. <laughs> I wasn't hey man, you anything. killed it for not uh yeah for no preparation right <laughs> that uh that was a yeah, I don't know why man when there's that multiple races a... I get rugged every time man that was a bad one to get rugged on that was a fantastic race and a huge upset by Delmos in the third time Derby where was where was Brad I didn't see Brad at all that's crazy man where oh why does it say Brad got first that was weird oh maybe it was 13. the number one horse that must have been the number one horse I was trying to reboot on me. Gotcha. All right. So, yeah, there you go. That is – let's go back and check, uh, see who the top wow. three, top four horses were. The third time derby, it was Delmos. Yeah, the Balthazar Mangers. You can see 100 to 1 there. Stardust got second from Grape Syndicate. Then the S minus. Oh, it was a fast track, though. Oh, I hear yeah, you. Yeah, that was a fast track. That don't count against Bride. Yeah, Bride's a soft runner. That's true. Bride is a soft runner. So that's why she wasn't able to take that win there. Kind of did not work out in her favor because she won like the last four of her races uh, to get herself into the third time derby, but then ended up getting a firm, a firm track and not able to pull it off. What's up, Smart Buy? What's up, Gritty One? What's up, Grape Syndicate? Grape Syndicate was in that race. Good race. It was uh, kind of an upset there at the end. <laughs> BD Henders agrees. What's up, BB? Drop in the house. Thanks, guys, for hanging out with us. We got another night of racing. We got all my horses in races except for Cheesy Hair. Cheesy Hair apparently just gave birth. Or wait. Yeah, where's my horse? Where's my baby? It doesn't say that Cheesy Oh, yeah, the baby should be here, right? Yeah, it doesn't say that Cheesy Hair is pregnant anymore, but I don't see a Cheesy Hair baby. Let me refresh. I'm hoping yeah, I try get refreshing. A, an S or an S plus. If I get an S minus, I will not be happy. There we go. We got an S, and the S is above cheesy hair, which I think that's a good sign. Although these stars, um, the stars are not as high as cheesy hairs. But I did breed cheesy hair with Tony Rigatoni, which is a horse, a S plus horse that has zero stars on all three preferences. So I didn't expect to get a lot of stars. I was just worried I might get an S minus. So the fact that I got an S is great. An S plus would have been excellent. But I don't know. What do you think, Mo? Is there anything I can tell at this point about this horse until I start racing it? Well, the good news is it's a female. So... Oh, I didn't even realize that. I forgot. You know, you could potentially take the... Yeah, you could take the S horse and... Try to breed it with something with better preferences down the road. To boost them preferences back up. You know what I mean? We should have a decent base, hopefully. True. Um, but yeah, yeah all right. looks pretty good to me, man. I mean, it's an S horse, dude, so... Those preferences, when you start getting to S and S+, plus, they don't really matter as much from what it seems so far, at least. True. I'm, yeah, I'm happy to get an S out of that. Plus, it's a Tony Rigatoni horse, so it's going to have that, that winning bloodline in it. We got another race coming up in about four minutes. Mo, you're a little bit static over there. I know sometimes you hit some buttons over there, and that fixes it. Looks like Bradley Marion was running that Sadie horse. That Sadie horse was in the front almost the whole race. That was the pace setter named after his wife. That's pretty nice of you to name your horse after your wife. 
I don't think I would name any of my horses after my wife. I think she would be offended by if I had one, my ex-wife either way. <laughs> Gabriel says, is that play to earn? Technically, yeah, it's play to earn because uh, when this game goes live, it's on the Solana blockchain and you'll be able to use actual money to enter your horses into races and then the prize will be paid in money. And then of course you can also bet on the horses, which we're gonna start doing some betting. We got some nice races coming up. I got some that I'm in, lots of maiden races, which are fun to bet on. And then uh, you can win money, of course, if you're gambling real money, you win real money. True Center says my A plus foe should be at a race age. Oh, today first, that's kind of exciting when that happens too, because whenever you give birth to a baby, if you're new to the game, you can see I just, uh, my horse just gave birth. I didn't give birth to it. My horse just gave birth to this uh, horse right here and it can't race for another two seasons, which in the beta, this is version two of the beta is two weeks. I got another horse down here. Uh, that I bred last week. One more season next week. A week from today, I will finally be able to race this horse, but it doesn't have a name. Do you guys, can you guys help me out with the name for this horse in the chat? Maybe whoever has the best name in the chat, I will name that horse because it needs a name. It came from a horse that I bought named Generational Wealth, and it does have all three, three stars on right, turf, and firm, and I like that. It's a filly. I'm kind of excited about it. I don't know how well it's going to do at racing, but I think it's going to breed me some good horses. I just need a good name. <clears throat> we got Chronic Jesus in the chat. I haven't seen Chronic Jesus in like five months. What's up, my dude? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I might play a little bit of VR poker tonight, but we just started. We're going for two hours. It's Saturday night at the races. Chronic, you need to get yourself a couple of horses. This is an NFT project on the Solana blockchain that's brand new. It's still in the beta stage. Hasn't even went live yet. And if you start learning about it like we're doing right now, you can make a lot of money possibly. All right, let's check out this D-Gen Money Maiden. We got a five furlong race coming up for Maiden Horses. Am I still rugged here or was my mic still staticky? Mm -mm, sounds good to me now. All right, good. What's up, Journey from the Palace? Let's go. I know Journey's got some horses by now. He's got to have some horses by now. I'm pretty sure. All right, this is a five furlong sprint. Let's see what all, what all horses are in this race. See if we got any homies in this race. We got Story of My Life, the S-tier horse from Poverty Ranch. Uh, this might be a horse that just became of age to race. I don't even know. You probably can't even enter them into races since it was just like uh, seven minutes ago. We got a horse named Donald Duck here. That's one of those VV horses right there. That's a VV NFT from Black Type Stables. We got Code Wind from Hollywood. We got Adirondack. 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 I know what that means. I remember reading about that at some point. It's like um, an elk or something. From Met Metaphor Farms, we got. Denali's Pass from Lex Stables. We got Nye if you love Jeebus. I don't even know what that means. From Drop Stable, that's another S tier horse. We got Tappy Rainbow from La Playa Farms. Demeter Spider from GBT Pocono. We got Reyna from Golden Stables. We watched Reyna race last night. Golden Stables is the number one stable right now on the leaderboard. We got Zelda. I like this horse. I'm a big fan of the old Zelda games. From Big Brain Stables, we got Slash Sean Connery. That's a nice name. From Groove Summer and Mo Smoke. From Mo Mo, you got you got a horse named Mo Smoke Mo. I didn't know you had this horse. I like it. Who's that? Mo Smoke. Oh, that's my new one. Yeah, yeah, first run. <laughs> nice. This is gonna be Mo Smoke's first run. Oh, Journey says we should name one of our horses. Should we name it soon or hashtag soon? I kind of like hashtag soon. What's up? Not a bot in the house says I have a name. Name it Meatball. I'm not naming any of my horses Meatball. That's disrespectful to my horse. I need to name it something fast and aerodynamic. All right, guys. Here we go. We got a five furlong maiden race with 12 horses. Uh, hopefully, Mo does not get rugged for this one. This could get hairy with all these horses in the field. <laughs> Let's see. What, let me see if I can bring my graphic back without playing it. Nice. All right, here we go. Good luck if you're in this race. Cross your fingers, chat. Oh, we loaded. Nice. All right, race fans. Welcome to the first race of the night, I suppose. Here on Saturday Night Races. 12 horse field there in the gate. And they're rolling here in the DGN Money Maiden. From the inside, there goes Cold Wind out with Reyna from the outside in second. And third, that's Nye if you love Jeebus. And Denali's passing fourth, followed by Story of My Life on the rail. And Zelda's in sixth here. 
Only about seven to make up early on as they make their way into the clubhouse turn. And it's a five furlong affair here going left on the dirt. And they ran the opening quarter in 23 and change. And it's Cold Wind who still shows the way by two over Reyna. And it's Nay if you love Jeebus now who sweeps on the outside for the lead. And back in third it's Reyna but about six wide on the track. In between horses it's Denali's passing fourth and Tappy Rainbow now gearing up from the back of the pack. But they hit the top of the stretch and head for home. And it's Nay if you love Jeebus who continues to show the way. In Denali's pass digging in in the final hundred looking for room. But Nay if you love Jeebus is going to save the day to here. And Nye if you love Jesus, holds on. In the DJ Money Maiden, 653 is your order of finish. Shout out to Drop Stable with the win. The Nye, if you love Jeebus, or Nay, I don't know. Maybe it's Nye. You might be right on that one. <laughs> I know. It's probably Nay. I... <laughs> Yeah. Shout out to Grape Syndicate in the chat. Just bred an S plus monster foe. Let's go. Congratulations. That's what I need. I need some S pluses in my stable. You might want to keep your eye on the marketplace today. There's going to be some people who uh, want to sell off some of their foes that they breed. Maybe they breed a bunch of them and they're only going to keep a couple. They don't want to race them all. And they sell the rest for cheap. Or also there might be uh, people who have mares that they've bred so many times and they don't want to breed it anymore so they sell that for cheap i know i sold one of my mares for cheap because i was tired of breeding it it was a b plus i'm ready to upgrade <clears throat> all right my homies we got another race coming up in seven minutes and 22 seconds and then another one after that uh let's see it looked like it was at 10 seconds later but no no it's about 10 minutes later and i'm in that dgen money mating coming up at 739 let's do some betting on this race we got the dr salt club stakes and the nice thing about this one there's only six horses in this race so we should be able to pick a winner here no other bets have been placed there's one nope two s tiers we got a golden stables horse and we got one from solonaut stables let's see what we're dealing with here it's a 10 furlong race left dirt and good are the preferences we got left Dirt firm, left dirt firm. Oh, this this S tier horse, the Maccabi Zoolander, likes to run on the right. But you can see it only has a half a star here, so it's not a huge preference. That's probably why he's running them this way. But that might not put my money on him because of that. Uh, we got another left dirt firm. We got a left turf firm running on the wrong surface, so I won't be betting on the Dizzle 03 horse. And then we got another left dirt firm. All right, let's see. This is a 10 furlong race, and we got six minutes, so we got a few minutes to analyze it. Let's see if Agave, how Agave runs on 10 furlong races, and see if we want to put our money on him or her. Her. All right, 10 furlong races at 11. Has some decent fleet figures there on a fast track. Got two second place out of nine. But I'm seeing a lot of tough finishes here. 11th out of 14, 11 races, and a, it's a derby race, though. Let's see, we got a 10 furlong here. I got 6 out of 15. It's a stakes race, too. These are some uh, big races. There's probably a bunch of S tier horses in these. Yeah, yeah, it's not like he's getting beat by A's and A pluses. So I'm having a feeling this is going to be a good distance for this horse to run. Let's look a little bit more. Third out of 6 on this fortunate trophy race. And fourth out of 7 at a 9 furlong race. All right, let's look at some more horses before we pick it. We can't pick the first one we look at. That is the rule of shopping. We're going to be interested in this Maccabi horse, even though it's running on the wrong uh, direction. It prefers right. It's running left, but it only has a half a star. Oh, it's never ran before. Zero races. Let's check out them parents, see what the parents look like. We got a horse here with seven wins out of 15 starts and a horse with nine places out of 13 starts and no wins. Uh, let's see what they prefer. They prefer left dirt firm and right dirt firm so that's why you got a horse here with a half a star at right preferences never raced before that's going to be an unknown we might have to keep that in mind besides that we got an s minus next from holly Wu. four minutes four and a half minutes left to, to bet 10 furlongs is the race distance he's been running it around that distance mostly and not getting great finishes here let's see what kind of horse he's racing against in this north club stakes lots of s's and S minuses. We might get a good price for this horse. Uh, it's got four wins, two seconds, and two thirds. We'll see what the odds look like. Another fifth place, 11th and 7th at 11. All right, y'all, we're analyzing this field, deciding who we're going to bet on. We got some A pluses too here. You're getting 6.37 for the A plus, 
only 4.71 for this A+. Plus. He does have full stars on preferences. All right, Mo, that's yeah, all Yeah, Rainbow right. Ghost looks pretty good. You like in Rainbow Ghost? I can see somebody's already been betting on Rainbow Ghost. I'm, I'm thinking, y'all. I'm still thinking. We've already got a lot of information that we've acquired. Let's, Rainbow Ghost is left dirt firm, so that's good. Geese Howard. I've never seen that Tamasic Stables. Let's see what Geese Howard's looking like. Got a first place at 10 furlongs and then a 13th out of 14 at 10 furlongs. Gilding and fast track. And this track is going to be good. So, yeah, I'm not going to go with Geese Howard. Mo likes Rainbow Ghost. All right, I need to make my decision. I think I got to go with um, the value bet here and go with Agave, Agave at 4.8. Yeah, we're going to do that. Although Zoolander is an interesting choice. I'm going to go with Agave. Should I go with Zoolander? I'm, I'm switching it up, y'all. I'm going with Zoolander. Zoolander is running right. <laughs> He's only got a half a star here. And uh, it's a good surface, which is closer to yielding. It's not fast. So I think uh, Maccabi could uh, surprise some people here. You can get 23 to 1 odds on him right now. And it's an S-tier horse. Let's do it. Let's go 500 across the board on Maccabi Zoolander. Zoolander, final answer. Plus, I'm a big fan of the Zoolander movie. So that's that seals it right there. And Mo, you say you like the, uh, oh, let me see what the name of that horse was. Rainbow Ghost, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually put my money on Agave. Oh, Agave. Oh, you told us Rainbow Ghost. There's people in the chat who probably bet Rainbow Ghost because you said that, and now you're swerving them and saying no. My money Not financial like, advice, bro. <laughs> Not you financial know. advice. That's right. Absolutely. All right, I went across the board on Zoolander. We're going to watch that race. We're going to let Mo call it, and hopefully we can bring home a win. That race is in about 12 minutes. Check out some of my horses here. I bet Rainbow Ghost. BD Henders bet Rainbow Ghost. Probably because it was Mo's choice there, and then Mo changed his mind. All right, let's pull this up so we can keep track of the time as well. Yeah, about 12 minutes before the next race. I think there was a race in between these, but it got canceled. Not enough entries. People are waiting for their horses to be bred and uh, to their for their new horses to be raceable now. All right, so this is my You know what's cool, though? Sorry. Yeah. Um, you can actually enter your horses, you know, even before they're raceable. So if you go to like, you know, after seven o'clock on a Saturday race, your horses that are, you know, one years old at the time, I was able to put that Mo Smoke in, you know, like early this morning. So you can go ahead and plan for that. Yeah, it sucks. We had a lot of canceled races, I guess. It, well, no, so that race that we were watching er, a second ago, or maybe just the one we were betting on, actually the one we were betting on, the horse that I bet on hasn't ran yet. So they could have uh, possibly put that horse in before it became eligible to run. See, I was thinking yeah. that since it just became eligible and entries closed before it became eligible that it wasn't a new horse but you just explained that it possibly could be yeah just in case people didn't know yeah if you have horses that are like you know you got to wait one more week to race them you know saturday morning late friday night when the race schedule goes up to enter you can put the horses in so it'll count them as two years old at that point gotcha nice but uh, are they less consistent when they're young? Does it take a while for them? I know they've talked about how uh, horses seem to peak around the second year or third year. Is that correct? Or am I just listening to people in their Discord too much? No, they've mentioned it. I mean, I haven't had a chance to see all the data and really analyze anything. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like my good horses did fade when they hit, like, seven years old. So maybe even six. Oh, really? Yeah, like the one horse was good at running 10 furlongs, and once it hit 7 years old, it seemed to run 7 better. So, you now as it got older, maybe it wasn't able to run that that 10 furlongs, you know, the same way. It got old. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, you know, happens, happens to all of us. <laughs> What's up, VV Mel's in the chat. Nice to see you here, my friend. Get yourself a horse. Grape Syndicate says, also realized picked up generational wealth from the market. Bred an A filly from her. Nice generational wealth is the horse I bought for five thousand and sold back for twenty five thousand. But I bred one. Of, I bred a horse uh, from one of the D Gen Derby winners with her before I sold her back. It looks like for the next season's Road to the Third Time Derby qualifiers are already open. At least the first qualifier, you can start earning points. I see a horse just entered a second ago. I said zero of twenty. These are grade grade three races, and it looks like the first one's going to be a ten furlong right turf race looks like it's going to be a firm course and that's tomorrow at 7 p.m is when the race begins in about 24 hours 23 hours but you can start registering your horses now uh do you put your horses in these mo no shot yeah no it's uh 
I'm not again. I'm not only using horses I own tickets for, and I don't own grade three runners. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> gotcha. I understand. I mean, if this cheesy hair foe end up, ends up being as good as I hope, maybe I can run him or her in those type of races. But I kind of doubt it. You got S tier horses too, don't you? You don't run those in the in these derby. I I don't have any S tier horses. Like I said, I'm playing a little bit differently than most of the people. I'm not taking any horses that I don't own the tickets for because all the breeding I do, I want to test out pure bloodlines no free horses from people and like throwing mix you know mixing up the bloodline so yeah i'm kind of approaching it a little bit differently so i'm gonna be more in the allowance handicap type races i think yeah that makes plenty of sense <clears throat> i don't know how many new people are even in the chat if it's worth explaining but there are a difference between some of the, the horses that you buy on the marketplace basically and the horses that you actually own on the blockchain and since this is a beta version when this version is over all the horses get reset and the horses you own on the blockchain you'll keep and of course they'll be reset as well but all the horses that you bought and bred will be gone this is the one horse i own that's on the blockchain swamp thing i've been testing him i don't know i'm hoping he's better whenever we go live because he hasn't done a, a ton for me yet but maybe i just haven't learned the best way to race him you got any advice for me on swamp thing this is my gen zero horse yeah can you uh can you post your stable link in chat or dm it to me Stable link. Let me see if I can figure out. Do I just no that? Just click work. on my stable and then copy and paste the link at the top. No, that just says my stable. I don't think that's the right link. Um... Oh wait, no, I guess not. Um, maybe just the horse. Okay. Horses. Uh, yeah, I can link you cheesy hair. Oops. Can you get it from the chat? Yeah, I'll grab it. Boom, there's cheesy hair that'll get you to my to my stable. Cheesy hair's foe is my new hero, and Swamp Thing is my real horse. Alright. Coincidentally, the first appearance of Swamp Thing dropping on the VV app tomorrow. Okay, that's right. So if I'm looking at your horse and then I click on your stable, now it brings me to your stable. Nice. Okay. There we so go. we want to know why Swamp Thing isn't performing. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say he's not performing. He's finished uh, in the money half of his races, and he's an A minus, so that's not horrible. And I haven't been like really very selective about ra races I'm putting him in. A lot of maidens though, but a couple of handicaps. I mean, speed figures are decent. I mean, especially our last race, eighty five, ran eighty seven on four, four, four furlongs. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I think it's just going to be more of a realistic approach that it's probably going to be a handicapper and got to catch that that right surface right right and i gotta find like a court yielding mate for him as well so that uh whenever it goes live i mean i ne don't necessarily have to own an actual breeding mate but even if i don't whenever it's time to uh catch him off in the marketplace even if i have to pay a little actual real money when we're live i need to find a good breeding mate so i can breed my bloodline starting off with swamp thing because that's going to be my pretty much my number one horse since it's my only real horse right so your ideal situation is try to breed up and get an a you know into an a plus right so you'll probably need like three four breeds to get to like an s minus you know at least yeah yeah at least yeah, exactly yeah but, but we can do it you know depending on how much it really costs to breed and you know that, that's why we don't really know yet exactly what the breeding costs are going to look like you know how much are they going to charge for registration fees right for a horse i mean there's all sorts of things that go into account but what are, what are registration fees? Do you mean just by like race fees, or is that something that you have to pay a one-time fee to start racing your horse? Yeah. So let's say the breeding fee is I don't know. Let's just say it's two hundred and fifty bucks, right, in mm -hmm. Derby coin. So you'll pay two fifty to the the male horse, and then you'll pay whatever it is, maybe ten ten percent, twelve percent of like a registration fee will go to you know photo finish or whatever, and. I'm, I don't know if that'll go into like prize pools and you know payouts stuff like that. Yeah, Zedron was the same way. I remember that. Yeah. So you'll yeah you'll pay like a an extra fee on top, and that's more of like a mint, I guess like a minting fee, right? So. Oh yeah, that makes sense. That's a good way to look at it. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. We got four and a half minutes before this next race goes down. The Doctor Salt Club Stakes that we bet on already. We got some other races we're gonna bet on. Let's check the leaderboard. See if we had any changes from last week. Uh, Golden Stables is still on top. Big Brain Stables is second. We might have checked this yesterday, so there probably aren't any changes if we checked this yesterday. But uh, Wolof here is in fifth, but Balthazar might have moved up after winning that third-time derby race today. I'm sure that was big. 
Uh, let's see, let's see. Let's see what else races we can bet on. We only got a few minutes before the next race. I kind of want to bet on my own race here, even though I'm probably not going to bet on my own horse. Oh, it's not available for betting yet. Oh no, looks like we got horse. Oh, we got races available for entry if you guys have any horses you want to run with us. We got two more races that are open for entry. And I might be missing a page sometimes, as we found out yesterday. If you don't refresh, you might be missing some of the races. Yep, I was missing them, all these right here. So we got uh, this one starting in about three and a half minutes. We got this DGen Money Maiden. I got a horse in here. You got three minutes and 50 seconds if you want to place a bet. I don't know. Can we pick a horse in three minutes? We can try. Of course we can. All right, let's see. Which one of these are mine? Sweet Puff is my horse, so I would say probably don't bet on that one. <laughs> I'll let you know if I have a horse I think is going to win. Look at all these. are all horses that are running for the first time. Cleaning Window, Sugar Cane, Eminence Rainbow, Ulysses, and Mythical Karif. Car I don't know. All right, let's see. We got three and a half minutes. Let's check where we're running. Left turf fast. Uh, we got a lot of soft horses in here. Nothing but soft horses. And this is a fast track. So I'm going to be looking for a horse that doesn't carry, care much about the um, the surface. Like my horse, possibly. Am I going to bet yeah, on I was going to say, your, ho your horse fits the bill there, right? Dang, I guess we're going to bet on my own horse. I'm not financial advice for sure on this one. All right, we're going to bet on good old Sweet Puff. I got a couple of puffy horses. Sweet Puff is one of them. Hasn't done much for me yet, but I do like his chances here. I like the fact that we're running on a fast track and all the other horses prefer soft tracks. My horse does too, but not as much because it has a half a star there. Hopefully you guys are following along if you're new what I'm talking about here. That's why I think my, my horse might have a chance. Maybe. That's a maybe, y'all. All right, let me get this pulled up the way that Mo likes it here. That way we should be right on time when it starts. What's up, Daniel Marquez is in the chat. Says, sorry, I'm late. My daughter is sick. Oh, no, my son is sick, too. Everybody is sick right now. Thanks for hanging out with us, Marquez. I hope you got a, a horse. We got Daniel D in the chat. What's up, Mr. D? My race is coming up. Which race are you in? Let me know. We definitely want to check out your race. I think we're going to be watching all the races tonight. But uh, I didn't realize that Daniel D had a horse. Let's go. I got a race coming up at 739. And we got this race starting in a minute and 30 seconds. We bet on this race, so I got some, I'm interested in it. I want to see what happens. But you can see here we got nothing but maiden races coming up. And that's because today a lot of new horses are um, able to race for the first time. So it makes sense that they put a lot of maiden races on here. I'm in this Pinnacle Championship, the last race of the night. I got my Apart Kish horse in here. I think it's, yeah, it's a grade three. I don't expect to do well, but you never know. You never know. Daniel D's in the Dr. Sock Club. Your Dizzle 03. Let's go. Yeah, we saw one of your horses earlier. I think I said I'm not betting on that horse. Let's see if uh, it's the Land Shark, Land Shark Puff Senior. You got some puff horses too. Everybody has these puff horses. I got a couple puff horses. That bloodline is just spreading. I said something in their Discord the other day about it. A bunch of cheese horses and a bu bunch of puff horses. <laughs> All right, guys, we got about 40 seconds. This is a 10 furlong race, the Dr. Salt Club Stakes. Do I got time to run through the horses? Oh, yeah, there's only a few of them. We got Moon Begins from Hollywood. We got Geese Howard from Tamasek Stables, Maccabi Zoolander from Hot Stables, Rainbow Ghost from La Playa Farms, Land Shark Puff Senior from my man Daniel D. Stable, and Agave from Golden Stables. Uh, Mo has his money on Agave. Uh, I think it was B.D. Henders has his money on Rainbow Ghosts, and I got my money on Zoolander. Good luck if you guys are in this race. It's post time. All right, take a vault. Horses are at the gate. It's post time here on Photo Finish Live. Six horse field there in the gate. And they're rolling here in the Dr. Salt Club Stakes. And McIvy Zoolander has out to the lead alongside Rainbow Ghost. And in third, that's Agave. And back down on the rail, it's Moon Begins in fourth. And it's Landshark Pup Senior runs along in fifth. And Geese Howard, the early trailer here, as they head out to shoot and on to the main track. And they're Passing the wire for the first time, everybody wave to Maccabi Zoolander, who continues to show the way here by two over Agave on the outside. 
And it's a break of three. Rainbow Ghost runs in between horses. That's Land Shark Puff Senior on the outside. And Geese Howard now gets into gear and moves in the fourth. And now the new trailer is Moon Begins. And only about seven to make up as they make their way around the clubhouse turn. Makaibi Zoolander in the first. Agave now comes up to apply pressure, but only about two lengths off the lead. And it's Rainbow Ghost continues to stalk the pace. And Geese Howard, one time trailer now in fourth and with a ground saving trip on the rail. Moon begins, slides into fifth, and the new trailer is Landshark Puff Sr. As they make their way on the back stretch here, and Nagave is your new leader and kicks clear by three as Makabe Zoolander. Oh, and just like that, Agave is sniped from the crowd and he's out of here. Your new leader is Rainbow Ghost, and Moon begins. And Geese Howard also now in third, but trying to pull up on the outside four wide. Makabe Zoolander's not out of it yet and comes back to apply pressure on the rail in fourth, make it third. And in fifth is Landshark Pup Sr. now, who is the trailer, as Agave is out of it. And they make their way off the turn and into the home stretch. And it's Moon Begins now, who puts ahead in front as they head into the final 200 meters. Moon Begins, Rainbow Ghost stags in second, Maccabi Zoolander in third. But they got two to make up here as they head to the wire. It's Moon Begins over Rainbow Ghost and Maccabi Zoolander. One, four, three is your order of finish. Shout out to the Hollywood Stables. Had a couple of victories during last night's Friday night races and starts off Saturday night with a win as well. I think we should go back and try to analyze uh, that race a little bit, see why that horse won. I'm curious about it. Rainbow Ghost got second, Zoolander took third, and then Agave. Agave was looking good, but he pulled up with an injury. So we said we were going to be doing this more often. Let's go in here and look at that a little bit first. Let me get the next race pulled up so we know when it's going to happen. We still got about seven minutes. Yeah, seven minutes before this race. So we got plenty of time. Let me use this page that Mo likes. And let's go in here and check out that Dr. Salt Club Stakes. What is it about Moon Begins that got that horse the victory? Maybe we can figure out. We got that A-plus horse, but um, I think BD Henders picked that horse. He ended up getting second place. Dignity says, my horse doing horrible. I only entered this race for the stream. I appreciate you entering the race for the stream, man. You got an A-tier horse. It's not a bad horse at all. Uh, what I noticed, though, Daniel D, pay attention to this for a second. This was a horse. I'm um, horse. This was a race on a dirt surface, and your horse here prefers turf. If you notice, all the other horses in the race prefer dirt surfaces, so that's why they had the advantage over you. That's why I mentioned earlier when I was deciding who I wanted to bet on, I didn't want to bet on the turf horse in a dirt race. Uh, they all prefer to run left. Your horse does too, but this one horse uh, prefers to run right. However, you can see it doesn't have three stars. It only has a half a star, and that's why they're probably running it on left because it doesn't really have much of a preference either way. But your horse has a big preference here on turf, so you want to be running it on turf races and not dirt races. So what's up with Moon Begins? Let's see. Let's check this horse out. This was a 10 furlong race. And uh, it hasn't been performing very well in 10 furlong races. It got, a, it got a boost in the mid here that it doesn't usually get. And it got a 96 on the late, so maybe it just got hot here. I don't know. What do you think, Mo? You got any analysis you can give us on the, uh, the results of this race? I mean, you got to throw away the other 10 furlong runs because they were both on a wet track, sloppy and soft. So I would throw them out immediately. I didn't pay attention uh, to that. Yeah, the 81 speed figure with a 64, 84, 96, that's beautiful. I mean, that's, I would love a horse like that. Um, just had a good at, run, huh? Yeah, just, just caught just caught the surface, man. I mean, it's, it's never caught 10 furlongs on a good track. It's always been yielding or worse, so. That might be the right distance for it then, just as long as you're getting it on the right surface. Uh, let me check to see how long we got before the next race. Oh, yeah, we got a few minutes. Let's get in here and see if we want to bet on any of the more up the upcoming races let me refresh it because if you go straight into that page sometimes you miss some of those races oh uh, yeah here they go we got the uh, dgen money made in round three what's with the r's i think you've explained this to me before but these aren't any of the races that qualify you for the third time derby series is this a different round for a different type of series with the r2s r3s r4s yeah so in v1 and up until this week when they introduced a new derby series um these were like the weekly events that led up to the uh, Derby, the D-Gen Derby back in November. So, yeah, they, the way they're doing it this time is a little bit different. 
I don't know if they're going to wind up phasing out these R1 through R10s. I don't know what they really plan on doing with that, but yeah, yep. it was basically the older version of like the road to the Derby. Gotcha. Man, lots of S tier horses in this race, even an S plus. Shout out to Foolies in the chat. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, we're going to pick a horse to race on. We got plenty of time to pick the bet, but we only got four minutes before the next race. Let's see what we got here. We got a right dirt condition unknown. Do we decide that's usually yielding? So far, we haven't tested that. So far, we had one unknown, and, we, and after the race, we went back and checked, and it was a yielding uh, condition. So I'm wondering if that's going to be the case here, too. We'll check it out. No, I think Ian said last night it was a bug. Oh, it was just a bug. It was just a, it was just a bug in the build, yeah. So we don't know what the condition is. Looks like all the horses here prefer firm, so it really doesn't make a difference on that. Uh, let's see. It's a right dirt race. We got nothing but right dirt horses. So all the horses are on their correct preferences. So possibly the horse with the most stars might have a little bit of advantage. I see the Muse here is kind of have the fullest stars here on right and dirt. And that's the horse that has the most bets on them right now. We got Valerian So from Grape Syndicate. Oh, these are all horses that have never ran before. Not all of them. This one's ran once or three times. But besides that, all these other horses are brand new. Never ran before. We got an S plus down here from Hazy Hills. Do we just go with the S plus? It's only got a half a star on the right uh, preference. But I don't know. I kind of like that at 5.73. You get the only S plus in the field. Hazy Hills has another horse in here. Black Widow. We got a Secretariat horse. Another S. Tupelo Honey. But, man, these are all horses that have never ran before, so you ain't got much to go on. I'm going with the S+. Plus. Am I crazy, Mo? What do you think? I like it. <laughs> Would you go I mean, just anything? like real life, though. I mean, you can start looking at, you know, find your trainers, find your, your barns that you know typically breed well, right? That's kind of when you can start looking for some, some good payouts. But That usually pays off. I used to do that when it came to the old Bob Baffert horses. Anytime I seen a Bob Baffert horse, I would bet on it, but not these days. No, sir. Doesn't always pay off. Also, Pat Day, I guess, because that's a Churchill Downs. I don't know if you guys know who Pat Day is. Maybe that's a Churchill Downs name, but anytime Pat Day was racing as the jockey, I was always betting on Pat Day's horse. That's I think the guy. problem with trainers, with playing trainers nowadays compared to back in the day, is that horses and trainers travel a lot more nowadays. Whereas back in the day, you would find certain trainers more in certain parts of the country. And now you find these guys that go west coast to east coast with their horses. They have two barns set up on each, you know, each coast. It's crazy. Yeah, and sometimes I'll check to see if a horse had traveled. In real life, I'm going to make a bet. And I didn't like to bet on horses that were traveling like that day or the day before, whereas a horse that yeah. traveled or arrived three days earlier. And I really didn't like uh, betting on, like, Arabian horses because they had to travel so far, but they started performing so well that I did start betting on them after a while. Do you have any... Uh, opinion on arabian horses uh not too much it, it's mainly just straight thoroughbreds for the u.s and australia for me i don't really even mess with like the steeple racing and stuff like that but I, i've watched arabian races uh saudi arabia stuff they do like on the dirt tracks but it's like dirt kicking up like they're in the freaking sahara dude it's crazy yeah i just mean like uh, horses that they bring from arabia that are qualified for like uh, the triple crown and derby races and stuff they end up being some powerhouses every once in a while yeah, and sometimes they run like those special races over. I think at uh, is it Del Mar? Somewhere oh, yeah. they do like the breeding, the Breeders' Cup. They do like uh, like Arabian races too, which is all Arabian horses. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, fully lets us know that Kobo is easy to detect now, so I have to keep that in mind. I think that's about Bob Baffert reference. Uh, we got True Stone in here. He's known for just in his PFL horses, so. Watch out for him. He'll come out with a B-plus horse and beat all the S horses, and you'll be like, what just happened? He's known for it. We saw it happen all the time in version one. All right, guys, it's about time to get this DJ Money Maiden race on. I got a horse in here, Sweet Puff. That's who I bet my money on, too. Uh, good luck if you're in this race. Let's send it over to Mo for the call. Here we go. All right. Thank you, Walt. The horses are at the gate. It's post time here on Photo Finish Live. Saturday night at the races. Eight in the gate. They're locked and loaded. And away they go here in the DJ Money Maiden. 
and its eminent rainbow from in between horses alongside cleaning windows on the inside. Back in third, that's Mystical Karif, followed by Sweet Puff, who runs on the rail in fourth. And it's Ulysses, back in fifth in between horses and White Mamba. Make that sugar cane is the early trailer here. As they make their way into the clubhouse turn in this eight furlong affair. Opening quarter in 23 and change. And it's still Eminence Rainbow continues to show the way. But just like that, it's challenged on the outside by Mythical Karif with a nice sweeping move on the turn. And Sweet Puff also got the better of that and splits horses for second. And it's Eminence Rainbow now back on the rail, sits in third, cleaning windows about two lengths off. The trio here runs along in fourth, and it's Ulysses in fifth, followed by Oblivion in sixth at 99 to 1. And you got some making up to do as they make their way down the back stretch. Half mile in 47 and change, they are carousing, and Mythical Karif continues to set the pace standards here in front of Sweet Puff, who now kicks clear by three, make it four. And it's Eminence Rainbow looking for another gear as moves off the rail and sits in third, now passed by cleaning windows as they cut the corner and head for home. It's Mythical Karif, four length lead out the window. Speaking of windows, here's a clean one. It's Cleaning Windows now, who kicks to the lead by two. Mythical Karif now fades back on the rail. Evidence Rainbow with a late bid here from the back, but it's going to be cleaning windows with a nice close. 386 is your order of finish. Cleaning windows. Cleaned my clock. I thought I had a chance there. My horse faded at the end. Shout out to Secretariat Stables, one of the top PFL stables on the platform. Gets the win there with the horse cleaning windows. I think that was the S-tier horse. Yeah, both the S-tiers finished first and second. I had Sweet Puff down here. Looking sweet at first. But not finishing very strongly. Yeah, what happened with Sweet Puff there, man? He wasn't as sweet as we thought. I mean, I don't know these Puff <laughs> horses. I don't know about these Puff horses. Let's bring them up. Let's <laughs> take a look. What happened? We can check it out. Let's see. We got another race coming up in, uh, oh, we got a while before the next race. So we got plenty of time to check out that last one. Next race is in 15 minutes. I'll get that pulled up just so we don't. Well, we probably got up. some breeding to do, too. No, we got to look at some breeding, some. Uh... Uh, see, I don't have some very new many, studs on the market. I don't have very many fillies. If you want, we could pull up your stable and you could talk to us a little bit about your stable. Uh, the horse that uh, won, yeah, we could do it. The horse that won this one was their first race ever, starting off with a pretty good record, undefeated. Uh, and then I guess you know what can I say? I had a horse here with a soft preference, and it ended up being conditioned fast. So I thought I might have a chance here because I only had a half a star at that soft, but I got beat by A plus with two and a half stars. So I guess that theory kind of out the window, right? Um, I don't know. Like I said, it, it really depends on what, you know, how many of the variables are in play here. Right. I mean, yeah, it might not be the right distance for the horse. Yeah. It could be the distance could be, you know, the horses was running handicaps and now they're not true. Right. Cause that was a, that was a straight open race, right? There was nobody carrying weight. That's right. Yeah. I mean, those races right there are pretty much going to tell you everything you need to know, you know, about your horse and about everybody else, really. Yeah, pretty much. I don't like what it told me either. All right, let's see. Let's <laughs> check my stables. Uh, I do have a filly. Let's see. I got a filly that I just bred. I got a mare that's retired. So, yeah, I could breed Cheesy Hair again. Uh, do you want to help me pick out a good match for Cheesy Hair? I bred it with Tony Rigatoni last time. It's a right dirt firm horse, S-tier horse with a pretty good record. Bloodline, it's a generation zero. You gotta always keep that bloodline. Um, I always keep two windows when I'm breeding to make sure that I'm not inbreeding at all. But I'll try to remember Smart. it's the space horse and the Cleopatra looking horse with the red hair. And you can go in here and click breed horse, and then you gotta pick the male, the mate. So, uh, any suggestions for me while I start looking for this? Yeah, let me just pull up cheesy hair. Okay. The right dirt firm, right? Three stars, two and a half, one and a half. Yeah, first thing I'm going to do when I click breed horse is go into these filters and filter out right dirt firm. Yep. Right dirt. And Although, can you even. Oh, yeah, I guess you can, sir. Uh, by surface now, condition, soft and firm. There you go, right dirt firm. There we go. I mean, we got some some S plus S plus S S S. I guess we can try to match up since my horse is retired. I can look at its figures now. Let me pull up another page. Like I said, I like to have two pages open when I'm breeding. I can look at mine and see like if it has an S plus on start. I might want to focus on its start. 
God, that's plus on speed, cheesy hair. That's pretty damn good. S plus on speed, yet yeah, uh, on speed and S plus on stamina. So he's got nothing but S's here. I want to upgrade my S's to S pluses, or maybe I could focus on speed. Let's see here. Right dirt firm is what we're looking for. We just want to make sure we don't inbreed. Uh, what do you think? Just go and start looking at the S's to make sure they don't have the same parents. Yeah, I'd probably look at the parents, but I, for me personally, I'd be looking at maybe like. Um... I like this James Jamerson horse. Yeah, that's the one I was looking at too with the three S pluses to start off. It's got a good start. It's got good speed. It has no A's. Even uh, though I do think finish, I, I really, Dirty Water Dog, the horse that won the D-Gen Derby, right? Yeah. If you go back and analyze that horse, even on the ticket level, that horse has horrible speed. Oh, but right. it had a good it had good start, right, I believe. Uh, amazing finish, right? But I, I don't think that horse had more than like a one speed on the ticket level itself, so. Interesting. Maybe Although it's not, not it's not called uh, Dirty Water Dog. It's called Balloon Arch. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've, yeah, I've bred with that horse before. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, James Jamerson horse, this is, uh, they have the same father, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, do they? Oh, let me take a look. I think that's what it looks like. I'm trying to make sure that I'm reading it correctly. Dana D says, great call, Mo. Speaking of clean windows. Yeah, yeah, that was perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's ways to upgrade your horse. You can A, you can buy another horse, or B, you can breed your horse, but you need to have a female horse so that you can actually uh, receive the horse that's bred. If you have the male horse, you just receive uh, the money for it. You don't get the actual horse that's bred. Yep. Yeah, right. see, okay, yeah, so you're, you can't breed those because the studs match. I, I don't have that problem because, like I said, I, I'm dealing with A's and A-pluses at the, at the top, you know? Gotcha. Yeah, I'm checking out another one, Run Amuck. They had the same parents. Uh, these do not, so I might be checking out this horse. This was the S26 RDF Go. And then let's see, um, Amistan only has S's though. I don't know if I want to breed with that, but it is an S tier horse. That's another option. Let's see what else we got. We got Ricky and Poppy Tart. I kind of like Ricky with that S plus, but see, they got the same father, so that won't work. So Ricky is out. Sorry, Ricky. Check out Poppy Tart. Poppy Tart's got the same parents completely. Or no, actually, that's a different mom, but the same, uh, same daddy. Unless those are just similar looking and not the actual same. I think they are the same. I'm pretty sure they're the same. I think uh, S26 RDF Go might be the only one. Oh, and this the other, is the other two right here. So there's two of them that I'm not related to that are S tier. Amazon and S26 RDF Go. Ooh, Amazon's a good horse, dude. Uh, I actually ran a horse for a couple seasons for the for Panther. It's the only horse, horse here with uh, S-plus finish, and it's one of the cheaper horses, uh, the second cheapest S-plus horse, or, yeah, S-tier horse to race. I did want to check out the S-minuses real quick, see if there's anything I wanted to look into, but I see a bunch of S-minuses. I'm just looking for one with good speed or finish. Finish is important, too, so s Amistan or S-26. I know S-26 has the higher fleet rating here. Let's check the records, race records on these real quick. Over... All career earnings, 131,000. Pretty good. It doesn't really show the um, actual race record. And this one has 15,000. Not very much on the career here. Let's look at Amistan. Only ran... Oh, ran Oh, that's not even the same horse. That's Amistan. Oh, is that a different horse that you were thinking of? Yeah, I think he has a whole bunch of them named similar. Mine was Amistan that I was running for him. Really <laughs> sick horse, man. I don't know if he has it up for a stud or not. Hmm. I kind of like the fact that the Amazon Amistan has an S plus finish, but my other choice is this S26, which has S plus star and S plus stamina. S minus on the finish, though. What do you think, Amistan or S26? Personally, well, actually, I would go with Amistan for the finish alone, and pray that you can get the speed of your horse. And the finish from Amistad and, and somehow get those genes to match up, you know? That would be nice. And plus, uh, the S26 is 250,000 Derby to breed, so I'm definitely not paying that much. I did't realize Oh, that. yeah, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's not do that. Yeah. So that's, that uh, seals the deal right there. Amistad, congratulations. Come on down. You are the lucky stud. What the hell is putting studs up at 250K? I mean, I, I almost clicked on that. What if I would have accidentally bought that not looking at the... Uh, <laughs> the price all right we did it oh you actually have enough to cover see i don't no, i'm always buying good. horses and selling them for like 10 percent of what i paid for them to hook people up 
Uh, Brian Murphy says, double your stamina. Hmm, I wonder what he meant by that. Because my stamina is S plus. Oh, so if I would have had an S plus, I think that horse did have an S plus that I bred with. Then you get to, I don't know if it's going to double your stamina, but it would be nice if I got an SS minus stamina out of that. If you don't know the, how the ratings go, it goes from A to A plus, then S minus to S, S plus, and then S plus plus, or SS plus. Probably SS plus, I think. No, no. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's SS, SS minus. SS minus. minus, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Gotcha. All right, cool. All right, we got another reason. If you race. want, I could, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I can link you my, I'll link you a horse from my stable, and you can click on my stable if you want to bring it up. Yeah, absolutely. I'll throw it in chat. There you go. Did you send it to my DM on Twitter? Oh, I could do that too. Yeah, easier. that'd be easier. We're going to check out. Moe's stable. I haven't seen Moe's stable every once in a while. One of his horses will pop up that I've never seen before. I'm like, Moe, that's your horse? And he's like, yep, that's my new one, just like that one we saw earlier. Let's see what Moe's working with. Here we go. He's got a cheesy horse, too. We're checking out Cheesy Town. This is one of Moe's horses. And from here, we can go to Bigfoot Stables, and we can see what Moe is working with. Uh, like Moe said, he's working with all the horses that he actually owns tickets to and ha has bred from the, his actual actual ticketed horses, which are actually NFTs on the Solana blockchain. And Cheesy Town... There's two exceptions to that, actually. Uh, okay. Dasin is not mine. And... Taya at the bottom is not mine. Taya, yeah. gotcha. Nice. But other than that, yeah, everything else is... Uh, but I'm not using those other two for breeding my own stuff. I'm just messing around with something else. But yeah, everything that I race, like I said, all the other horses are bred from my crappy little A-rated barn here. <laughs> Man, this Cheesy Town horse is looking good. It looks like it came out pretty nice with uh, all full stars on right, all full stars on turf, and you got an A-plus filly out of it. That's pretty good, right? I am going to be interested on that because if what we're talking about lately is correct, we got three stars, three stars, zero stars, right? So... That right there could be interesting on like a yielding track, you know, so that's, that's kind of why I did it. I was hoping to get that outcome and I did. Um, nice. Yeah, we saw that happen to us uh, to a race last night when we were watching a race with a yielding track and we were betting on a horse that had zero stars in its preference for what uh, condition it liked. And we thought that maybe that would help it and that horse ended up winning. So we're kind of working on that theory right now and this horse would fall into that theory. And if that theory is right, this horse should do pretty well on yielding tracks that are right in turf. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. I just realized. What's that? Uh, look at my stable. Go to, go down to my B plus horse. You ought to know. He actually won a race. I didn't watch this race. Are you serious? Holy you crap. A it's win? a B plus horse. Actually won a race. Dude, this might, this B horse, B plus horse rather, has been running some insane races for being a B plus. <laughs> I'm telling you. Nice. Yeah. Uh, beat a A minus, beat a couple of A minuses in this race. Go back down to like towards the bottom. The Dominion. He ran a 106 closing uh, fleet figure on a soft track. That's that's freaking quick, man, on a soft track. Is that what so your if horse? I breed this horse up, yeah, if I breed this horse up, I think with like an A or an A plus uh, female, mm -hmm. that that could be interesting. Yeah, that is pretty impressive uh, fleet figure for a soft track. That's in a sprint type race too with six furlongs. Yeah, and it was a B plus horse. horse. Like yeah. I said, it, that horse cost me like. 107 bucks or something like that. It was dirt cheap, man. When Solana crashed, I, I grabbed it. Nice. Dang, I so. can't believe a B plus costs 100 something bucks. How much does a like an A plus horse cost if you want to buy a ticket off of Solana? Oh God, Rainmaker cost me like 380, 375, something like that. Oh, well, that's not horrible. No, that's only an A horse though. Right. Um. But at that point, I was selling off all my Rainmaker uh, NFL NFTs, so... Yeah, I know you did really well all... with Rainmaker. How was it that you were making money with that? Is it just that you were uh, picking the players who scored the most points that week, like a fantasy football deal? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I won my horse. I won my female horse, Dig Deeper Watsana, that way. But, uh, no, man, me and my uncle split a pack. They were, like, fifty nine ninety nine. We pulled a legendary Darnell Mooney, Ooh. sold it for 1500 so me and him split that. We both started our own little DraftKings empires for the season. I started buying like Jameson William legendaries for like three hundred. Flipped it for a thousand. I was just buying. I was basically buying rookie cards because rookies don't normally do well in the NFL early on. It usually takes them like six or seven weeks to get acclimated, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just kind of banked on some dudes, man. 
and like Kenneth Walker on the Seahawks. I was picking up his cards for a dollar each, flipping them for anywhere from 10 to 17 at the peak. Damn. You know? Nice. So, yeah, you're talking about, yeah, 10, 15 X in your money on each one. I so. didn't realize that market was so hot over there on the DraftKings. It's funny. I was telling my girl about this earlier, right? I say it all the time. You follow the money, right? I'll follow Disney. I'll follow Marvel. I'll follow the NFL, right? That's why when them Trump cards come out and they start doing what they're doing, you can't really be surprised because, damn, there's just so many people, right? It should have been, you should have seen it coming. Um, but yeah, man, I'll follow the money, dude. The NFL, that, that NFT program, especially when Rainmakers with DraftKings, you're using the same DraftKings account that you gamble with, that you play fantasy football with. There's no wallets. There's no weird things you got to do with seed phrases. You know what I'm saying, dude? That's All nice. that stuff right there is why that market is doing so well still. Um, yeah, it's easy things to understand. Things you should take in mind, yeah. Yeah, people get scared of that wallet stuff. And I can see why, because there's a lot of scammers out there trying to get other people's wallets. As soon as you get a wallet, there's somebody trying to get it from you. So having it kind of like centralized there on a big, well-known platform makes sense that that's a good way to have mass adoption. And I do think those Trump NFTs, I knew I should have bought one and I didn't, Ugh. but I knew that uh, I knew that they'd do all right and they would b bring a lot of eyes to NFTs in general. All the press they're getting and mainstream media, even if it, they're making fun of it, it's giving people the idea of what's an NFT once again and they're looking it up to find out what it is and that helps them find other projects like this one just by searching to see what an NFT actually is. Well, that's true. I think about it this way too. People on VV can't talk about uh, mint sizes anymore because it was 45000 minted on that. And they're going for, what, like 600 minimum floor price right now? <laughs> I think they're up to like 900 last time I checked. Did they spike? Wrong. Oh, I my think they Lord, spiked again, dude. is what I saw on Twitter. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, yeah. Somebody oh, said they had one, crazy. they sold for 900 and they paid 99 bucks for it. Ooh. And they say we're in a bear market, huh? I mean, I don't know. I think it's <laughs> – I feel like the Trump thing is just flippers – flippers flipping them i don't know i don't are you really think it's trump supporters buying nfts for the first time for 500 a pop i have a hard it time doesn't matter it. what it is it's just still you look at the volume right if people say we're in a weird ass market like you just got to give people something they want to buy yep. you know you just can't keep pumping out these weird ass nfts but like if the utility of your nft is somebody else making a showroom and having like a display with animations that's your utility i mean good luck to you you know what i'm saying but if you have actual utility and people are starting to flock to things, like especially with this horse racing, right? I mean, I don't know. It's just you got to have eyes on it. That's yeah, really gaming, down gaming to. is probably the best utility. All right, good luck, everybody that's 100%. in this race. It's game time. All right, fans. It's post time. Horses are at the gate. Here on Photo Finish Live. Seven hours field, they're locked and loaded. And away they go here in the Sandhills Restricted Stakes. From the inside, there goes Cyberpunk alongside Nubian Frontier. And down on the rail, it's Jimmy Neutron about two lengths off the leaders. And on the outside, it's XJ13, and I got a burp. Ah, and then it's Giselle, who now moves up into fourth, followed by Tidal Wave, who's in fifth, as they make their way into the turn. It's... Quarter and 23 and change, and Cyberpunk still continues to show the way by a nose over Nubian Frontier, who takes the, takes the lead back just like that. And Cyberpunk now fades back to third as Jimmy Neutron also looks for their best run and goes right on by to kick clear by two for the lead. As they hit the turn and head for home, it's Jimmy Neutron. And right back on the outside is Cyberpunk to take back, which rightfully is. Jimmy Neutron back on the rail, still digging in here. From the back, it's XJ13 with a late run in the final 100, but it's going to be Cyberpunk. It was a terrible video game, but a beautiful horse. As it's three one two is your order of finish. Shout out to Cyberpunk from Poseidon Racing. I wonder if that's Poseidon Racing that used to have the YouTube channel for Zed Run. I used to watch his channel. It probably is. Who else would call themselves Poseidon? That's interesting. I never seen his stable on here before. But I, I don't know the game Cyberpunk. That might be before my time. Maybe you are older than me, Mo. That's one I don't know. No, it was from like a year and a half ago. Two oh. years. It was that broken ass game that came out. It was like supposed to be the the best thing since Toast. And <laughs> the best uh, thing since yeah, Toast. it was just good. broken as hell. And yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that game personally. I must not have saw it. I, uh, looks like we got this Pinnacle Championship is live right now. We can join it in progress if you want. I don't know. It looks like we had a couple yeah. races. I got rugged on it. I can't actually pull it up. Let me see if I can try to find it on another channel. On Pinnacle? 
Uh, they had the Pinnacle Championship. Yeah, let me know if you pulled it. Nah, I got nada. Oh, I got it. Yeah, I do got it over here. All right, should be 14 seconds into the race here as they make their way on the back stretch, and we now join this race in progress as Backstable runner, that's the eight horse, shows the way here around the opening turn. It's Usain Colt, opening quarter in 24 and change. It's Usain Colt over Sky Hill by half a length. And down on the rail, that's sharpened up now, who starts to get going here in this five furlong affair. Two length break, that's Balfan, Balfane maybe, is in fourth, followed by Boohoo in fifth and Rainbow Tower. 99 to one as they hit the top of the turn and head for home. 200 meters to go, Usain Colt on the outside. Sky Hill splitting horses at will, now takes the lead. As they hit the final hundred, it's Sky Hill in the middle. Balthane looking on the rail. It's sharpened up to the wire. It's going to be sharpened up with a photo finish over Sky Hill and Balthane. OEB racing with their first win of the night. That was a photo finish. I think I had a horse in that race that never got onto the leaderboard. Let me see if I'm <laughs> right. It was a grade three race, though, so I wasn't expecting much from them. Let's see. Sharpened up gets first. Sky Hill gets second. And yeah, Park Kias was my horse down there. And second to last. And I like that horse name. I hadn't seen that before. Usain Colt. That might be one of my new favorites right there. That's yeah, that's a cool name. I like that. That's a good name. All right, we got another race coming up in eight minutes. This is the one that we bet on earlier. We need to go back and bet on a couple other ones. Uh, we went with the S-plus on this one, the Runtz horse. Uh, let's go back and place some bets. Sorry about that last one. We had two races going off at the same time. Sometimes they get scheduled like that. And... Uh, if you have a long race that's maybe 10, 11 furlongs, it takes a while to end, and you might have to get into one in progress. Let's see. We got yeah, it has to do more, like I said, with those uh, R1, R2, R3 races, you know? Oh, is that what it is? Okay, those sometimes overlap other races. Yep. Got you. All right, we got a Star Spangled Allowance that's running tonight. This is one of these races where some of the horses are going to be carrying extra weight. So this should be interesting. That's going to help us pick which horse we're betting on. Oh, looks like we missed our chance to bet. Looks like betting is closed. Let me go back and make sure that's right. I might need a refresh. I think it closed. Yep, yeah, because it starts in 10 minutes. Let's see what horse we would have bet on, though. Just out of curiosity. Looks like nobody placed any bets on these. Are they all carrying one pounds? They're all carrying one pounds, except for D-Gen Mint is carrying three pounds because he has two wins. Uh, let's see. Who would we be betting on here? Biscuits Barn has three horses in here. OEB Racing has a horse, Truthful. I would probably be going with OEB Racing since it's only carrying one pound against this other A-plus with three pounds. And I'm thinking this Biscuit Barn's horse, or this Biscuit Barn stable might not be that great. I could be wrong. I don't know nothing about them, but I'm just saying they got a B-plus and an A-minus and an A-plus to run them all together. So that makes me not very confident in betting on their stable. Then again, they probably know more about it than I do. All right, guys, we got six minutes before the next race. It's the D-Gen Money Maiden. Uh, we got our bets in on this one. It's 11 furlong. It's going to be a distance race. We got another uh, race that we can bet on that's going to be running tonight, the D-Gen Money Maiden, a four furlong sprint, and there are no bets on this one yet. Looks like all these horses are running for the first time except for Rainbow Oscar. I don't want to just bet on the horse with the best ranking. Because plus you probably won't get the best odds. I want to make sure that we examine these a little bit and make sure we make a good pick. We're running on right turf, but we don't know the condition on this one. Let's see if we got all right turf horses. We do. But we got some soft horses and we got some firm horses. And we got some horses here with zero stars. They're all right turf. This S minus Shaka from Golden Stables, the top stable on the leaderboard right now, has a zero stars on the soft. And we have an unknown condition. If it ends up being yielding, and we are correct on our theory on zero stars on these surfaces. Maybe uh, maybe this horse will do better than expected. It's got 11 to 1 odds. You got a gift here, an S tier horse at 6 odds. You got an S plus in this one from Secretariat Stables, Madam George. Only a half a star on soft also, so I'm kind of liking that, especially at 6.21. McWacky Racers has a bet on it already. 200 to win for Bodica. And then we got the sequel from Wolof. We got an AW and Oceanside horse at A+. Two-year-old horse from Premier Stables. And Maccabi Ethereal from Solana. All the horses here that say age two are the ones that just became of age to race, which is pretty much every horse except for Rainbow Oscar. So 
I kind of like Madam George. It's kind of hard not to bet on Madam George at 6 to 1. I, like I said, I didn't want to go with the one with the highest ranking, but here we are. And that's the one I'm picking. It is Secretary at Stables. It has the half a star on the soft turf. And I'm assuming that this is going to be, uh, it says unknown. Maybe it's going to be yielding surface. Maybe it's going to be yielding. We need to go back and see if that last unknown race ended up being yielding mo. They said it was just a glitch, so maybe you just don't get to know what the surface is going to be. So if it ends up being a firm surface, a fast surface, or a good surface, then these horses right here with the firm preferences are going to have an advantage over this soft horse I'm picking. But that's the one I'm picking, Mo. What do you think? Yeah, I would think uh, that would probably get fixed first thing Monday, whatever the next build up they push out. And it makes the betting a little bit more interest. There's a more interesting. There's a variable there that you have to take into account that you don't know. Yeah, but in real life, that's never the case. I mean, right. weather tracks don't change that quickly. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. If you're in Florida, some of those Florida tracks, I feel like uh, it can start raining out of nowhere. That happens sometimes in Florida. Yeah, but Gulfstream and Tampa, I mean, those are the two main Florida tracks. I mean, they're both built to retain moisture nowadays especially Gulfstream, it just got an overhaul but i mean you're not wrong i mean if it rains for you know 15 20 minutes straight yeah it could go you know down in, in rating but yeah it, it, ian did say it was a bug so i'd imagine it'll be fixed it keeps making me uh, bet for this horse that i didn't pick which is weird i checked too i could probably go back and check on the stream and rewind i didn't pick the one horse at all but it pulled up a couple times and took a bet when I was trying to bet the five horse, it took my five bet, my five horse bet, but it also placed a one horse bet. Now it says that I only have a thousand on show at the one horse. Oh yeah, apparently it did show twice. I don't know, that was weird. Hopefully you guys saw that on the stream. Does it sound? Yeah, like yeah I might to go back and it. clip that. Maybe we can find something to send over to, to the team. Nice, might be helpful. All right, guys, we got another race coming up in about two minutes and 24 seconds. This is the D-Gen Money Maiden. This is the one we bet on Runts 33. Uh, let's check out the horses in this one. Looks like we're going to have some nice horses racing for the first time in this one. Uh, we got a bunch of foes. We got Valerian So from Grape Syndicate. We got Maccabi Northerly from Solonite Stables. Bombix Mori from Silk Road Stables. The Muse from Wolof the Bandito. We got Rainbow Jocko from La Playa Farms. Smup Legend Shoddy from Smup Legends. <laughs> I like Smup Legends. We got... Tupelo Honey from Secretariat Stables. We got the Parrot from Speedy Stables. Runs 33 from Hazy Hills. Black Widow also from the Hazy Hills Racing Ranch or Stable. And we got Peanut Butter Ricky from True Stoner. That's a good name. True Stoner. Good old Peanut Butter Ricky. And Cerritos. Cerritos from Golden Stable. The top stable on the app right now. This is 11 for a long race, so it's going to be a long race. Condition is yielding. Uh, let's check some of these horses. Stars here and see if this yielding uh, helps these horses with not very many stars and their firm or soft <coughs> preference. You got Parrot here with only one star, Peanut Butter Ricky with a half a star, but that is an S- minus and an A+. Plus. If either one of these horses ends up finishing top three, then that will kind of confirm our theory a little bit on these yielding tra tracks anyway. All right, let me get uh, let me get this full screen for Mo so that we're not off whenever the race begins in about 50 seconds. I think we're good to go. Mo, did you place a bet on this race, or do you want to pick a horse? What are you thinking? I actually didn't get a chance to put one on this race. Actually, did I, did I bet on this race? I might have. There's quite a few bets on this one. Uh, I think I might have bet on the... Did I bet on the one? I think the music... Oh, no, that was the other race. That was the other race, McKibble. Oh yeah, we got a Maccabi, a Maccabi horse in this race as well. I don't know what that Maccabi word is, but we got to figure out how to pronounce it because half the horse. No, I already know. I, it's Maccabi. It's Maccabi. It's I, like I said that guy hit me up in Discord and DMs because uh, oh. cool dude, we talk anyway. But he was like, yeah, just so you know, and I, I know the name from watching Australian racing. So oh, I see. yeah, it's Maccabi. You are. Right I still say Maccabi, but they're gonna have to uh, have to live with it. You be able to call this? It's kind of smoky. Yeah, yeah, we're good, man. We're getting a little smoked out. You know, electronics are, uh, you know, doing their thing, but we're good. Good luck, y'all. All right, race fans. Horses are at the gate. It's smoke time. I mean, <clears throat> post time. 12-horse field. 
And they're off here in the DJ Money Maiden. From in between horses, there goes the Muse. Followed by Bombix, Mori, and Valerian Soul down on the rail in third. Back on the outside, that's Black Widow and Cerritos. Followed by Runts 33, running in sixth here as they make their way around the clubhouse turn in this 11 furlong affair. And it's still the Wolof Bandito runner, the four horse. Opening quarter in 24 and change, it's the Muse. And back to Valerian Soul now, continues the ground saving trip on the rail. And a break of two, that's Runts 33 now, who improves position from the back of the pack. Now passed by Black Widow in the third. And Bombix Mori's in fifth, and Cerritos in sixth at 99 to 1. As they pass the wire for the first time, everybody wave to the Muse. As the Muse at 1.69 to 1 continues to show the pace here over Valerian. Valerian Soul, but now Valerian Soul starts to mean business and increases its position here on the rail now to a half length and looks to go right on by. Yoink! Takes the lead as Valerian Soul now leads by a length over the Muse. Back in third, new challenger is Rainbow Jacko and Black Widow in fourth. Back in fifth in between horses is two Pello Honey and it still runs 33. Stuck in sixth here as they make their way on the backstretch. Three quarters in 114, you know what it means, it's Valerian Soul. Two length lead over the Muse, now relegated back to second, and Rainbow Jocko finds his best kick here on the backstretch. But they still got some running to do, as Valerian Soul now kicks clear by three. And the Muse, not to be outdone, keeps it close. But Black Widow now starts to fade on the outside, six wide. Tupelo Honey is in between horses and got some room to make up at 10 to 1. Rainbow Jocko back in the fifth and runs 33. I feel like he's glitched out because he hasn't moved, but he's still in six. Never mind, it's Maccabi Northerly is the new sixth place challenger. As they make their way into the far turn, Valerian Soul loved that lead, but there it goes as the Muse takes it back. And the favorite now shows the way down the backtrack and Black Widow on the outside. The Muse digs in on the rail. From the back of the pack, it's Rainbow Jocko. Only another half length to go as they make their way into the final hundred. And the Muse is going to get passed here by Rainbow Jocko at 99 to 1 over Muse and Tupelo Honey. La Playa Farms gets the long shot victory with Rainbow Jocko. We need to go back and see uh, what that rating was on Rainbow wow. Jocko, who came out of nowhere and got that victory. It looked like the favorite, the Muse, was going to win it. The horse I had bet on, the S Plus horse, never really showed anything that whole race. Set it around the mid pack the whole entire time. Let's check out Jocko real quick. Um, let's see. Make sure we don't got another race coming up now. We got one, we got some time before the next race. Actually, let me check to make sure. Sometimes you miss races, so let me double check. What's up, Tucson Collectible? Says, where do I buy a horse? I want a good one. I can explain it to you how to get one. Uh, yeah, we got plenty of time. We're going to go back and check this Jocko horse real quick. See what he looks like. And I'm going to talk to Tucson Collectibles. What was that? Oh, I was going to say. There's no way that, was that the horse? What's going on? Race history, I think it was the Star Spangled Allowance, it was the Yielding Turf, and it was this, that was not the horse that just won, was it? No. It's not showing me the right race, Mo. What do you know, Mo? No, that was the uh, D-Gen, this, this was another race that ran, I think. Remember I said they were overlapping. That's what it was, they were overlapping, so I guess the race was running at the same time. Yep, the Rainbow Jocko, it was an S-tier horse, so it was a pretty good looking horse. And uh, like I said, all these horses are running for the first time. There you go. Shout out to La Playa Farms. Congratulations. Uh, Tucson Collectibles, whenever you sign up for an account at Photo Finish Live, this is the beta version. It's not live yet. So you'll receive uh, some free derby tokens. And derby tokens are the currency that you buy horses with and you race horses and you breed horses. You'll start off with like 250000 maybe 300000 And you can go to this marketplace. And I like to just keep my eye on the market and look for good pickups. I've been able to pick up some decent horses uh, for like 20000 25000 5000 I try not to buy stuff that's like 100000 Um I try not to buy the B-tier horses. Although, if you can figure out how to work the allowance and the handicap races, you can still make money with good B-tier horses. You just got to be selective and you got to learn the system a little bit. But that's the whole point of playing uh, the beta version right now is to learn the system, learn how everything works, and to get good at it. Turning the palace yeah, real horse quick won. though, don't uh, Sorry. don't get it twisted. That that B plus horse of mine, that one is the only the second B horse I've seen with a win. Just throwing it out there. Only the second B horse. Yeah, B horses aren't going to be useful until claiming races and really, really like cheap, cheap racing. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if I worry about handicaps with a B horse. That's going to be more for like the A minus to the A plus types horses. I, I think. 
how it looks. That makes sense. Uh, journey from the palace is stop running your horse. Stop running is journey from the palace's horse. He just got his first win. You get a chat winner for that. That was the uh, race that was overlapping that we didn't watch. That was this 11 furlong race, and it was stop running. Journey from the palace's horse gets his first victory ever. Congratulations. A nice fleet rating too. 83 fleet rating. Let's check it out. First out of seven, won 2,671 Derby, and he got a 93 fleet rating at late. Went 79, 80, 93. That might be the distance for this horse. This might be a good, uh, some good information for you when running that horse in the future. Maybe we'll go back and watch that race because we got another 10. Uh, we got another 10 minutes before the next race. Do you want to call that for journey? We it's kind of a. a yeah, I'm just gonna click on it at the same time. It's kind of a spoiler alert, but it's all good. All right, you ready? We're gonna give you a countdown. We're gonna go one, two, three, click. All right. And we'll look at the Star Spangled uh, Race, Allowance. right? Yep. Yep. One, two, three, click. Okay. We're good at timing because we're VV users. Here we go. Good All luck, right. y'all. Well, not good luck. All right, race fans. For those of you watching the Minnesota Vikings come back from an insurmountable Deficit to win the game. Here we are racing horses and they're off and running. We have no idea what happens in this race by the way as stop running is out to the lead alongside Nevermind on the inside and back in between horses at Excalibur about three wide on the track followed by DJ Mint and South Beach Viking and Truthfuls in six here only about seven lengths off the leader as they make their way into the opening turn in this 11 furlong affair they're going right on the turf ladies and gentlemen opening quarter in 24 and change as Nevermind now opens up by four over South Beach Viking and it's Nevermind Four lengths over South Beach Viking and stop running down on the rail and his truthfuls in between horses battling with them beautiful markings. And it's world painted blood now improves position from the back of the pack with a mid-race move as they get ready to pass the wire for the first time. You know what we do here, everybody wave to never mind, but they gotta do it again. It's never mind now at eight to one with a four length lead over stop running. And it's truthful on the outside, about three to make up from World Painted Blood at 13 to 1. And it's DJ and Mint who runs along in fifth. And on the outside, that's South Beach Viking in sixth here. But it's a tight field, and never mind. Looks to might have pulled a hammy there, taps on the brakes, but stop running. Does the exact opposite and continues to run at 3 to 1. And back in second now on the outside, that's truthful and World Painted Blood who now scoots up the rail to challenge the leader. And it's South Beach Viking back in fourth, followed by DJ Mint. Then comes Nevermind, who once thought was to be pulled a hammy, looks to still be in the race. Not out of it yet. As we make our way back to the front of the pack, ran the mile in one minute and 39 seconds, and World Painted Blood is challenged once again by Stop Running. And I wonder if Stop Running is ever going to stop running, but for now, he's going to keep going, as South Beach Viking now moves into second to challenge the leader four wide. And it's truthful now with about four lengths to make up. And it's DJ and Mint, but they hit the stretch and head for home. And it's stop running. And he keeps on running over two lengths. And it's South Beach Viking who digs in here. From the back of the pack, it's truthful with a late run. But not today. It's going to be stop running. Take it at home. We had no idea, no spoilers. Never thought it was going to happen. 247, your order of finish. Shout out to Journey for the Palace with his first win ever and a convincing one win. Won that easily. Run, won it running away. Good stuff. That's a good looking horse. Right, let's get it set up for the next race. Let's get it set up for the next race. We got about, oh, we still got seven minutes. We got plenty of time. Uh, we're going to see if there's any other races we want to bet on that we're going to be calling tonight. Let me go ahead and get the next race keyed up in seven minutes and let's go see what we got on the schedule i'm going to refresh it because if you go to this page sometimes you won't get all the races unless you refresh we've learned that uh through experience so i'm going to make sure i refresh every time we go to this page we got the next race like i said in about seven minutes this is this windy city maiden let's see if we got any homies in this race we got oeb revere ranches in this race and uh rinsed out racing i haven't heard that heard of that um stable before valley happy sounds familiar though all right, we'll watch that one. I don't know anybody in it, but we also have this DJ Money Maiden that we bet on. Uh, this is the one where my bet got a little mixed up there. I meant to bet on Madam George across the board, win, place, and show. Somehow I got a bet in there 
on Mekaib, Mekaibi. I'm trying to learn that word. Mekaibi Ethereal. That whole entire horse name is tough for me. And then we got another race after that. Let's see if we can get back to the races. We have the DJ Money Maiden. Seven Furlong. Actually, that's at 909. We have this Honeycrisp Allowance that's not full yet. This might get canceled if you guys want to get into this race. Entries close in 25 seconds. We need at oh least boy. two horses in 20 seconds. I might have a horse to put in. Honeycrisp Allowance. Try to get in there so we can watch this race. I got one of my horses in there already. Natty Light Silver. So it's going to be an easy win. Natty Light Silver is the worst horse I've ever seen. So you could easily defeat him. We have another one, Appalachian Maiden has zero horses in it. If we can get this one filled up, we'll call that as well. And then at the end of the night, the 8.59 race is the Dr. Sturdy Stakes. That one's got plenty of horses. That's a grade one race. I don't know why I'm in a grade one race. Swamp Thing's in this race. I didn't know it was grade one. He's gonna get smashed. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, you excited for the Swamp Thing drop? Was that tomorrow at three Eastern, right? Yeah, it's tomorrow, but the addition size is pretty high. I probably won't go for the drop, but I might try to snipe some good serial numbers in the market afterwards. I usually... I, I didn't look at the medium articles. It's just um, the one statue, or is it multiple? It's just the one statue. I think it was... Oh, messed up. I think it was 2,888 editions. Let me check. And it was 30 gems to buy. Really but, not that high of a mid-count, right? Yes. Oh, actually, I think it's 50 gems. 30 gems is for the poster that's dropping tomorrow. 60 gems, 2,888 editions. But it's animated with sound. I, I mean, it actually looked pretty cool. It does definitely look cool. And I like Swamp Thing, of course. I named my horse Swamp Thing. And it's animated with sound. But 2,888 editions for 60 gems? I don't know. That one might be a pass. We'll have to see. Looks like Fully is Valley Happy, so we do have a homie in the uh, race coming up. Good to see somebody in the chat. If you win it, we'll give you a chat winner gif or gif, depending on which you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is I this. mean, the guy who created the, the thing himself said it was, right? What that was my argument. I always said you got you to gotta go with what the inventor says, and the inventor says it's gif, even though every literally everybody else says gif. That's the one that matters, though. What's up, Ham Moon? We got Hemi in the chat on the night stream. Yeah, we're doing our Saturday night at the races every Friday and Saturday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Me and Mo Nose go live for a photo finish live horse racing. This is NFT horse racing on the Solana blockchain, and it's still in their beta uh, version 2. Hasn't went live yet, so we're just learning the game, getting in early and uh, trying to figure out how to make some money with it. Okay, somebody's talking about how these are juvenile races. I need to go back. BD Henner says... No, this is a juvenile, so only two-year-olds can race. Something new that I just noticed. This one also says juvenile. You go to requirements. Yep. Age has to be two. Okay, cool. So these are only new horses. Nice. Yeah, but the maiden races can, you know, they can run the two-year-olds and anybody else who hasn't won a race yet, too. So it gives, you know, gives the two-year-olds more options. Yeah, I think they said that was a new option, too. I've never seen a juvenile restriction before. Let's see who's in this race. Starts in about three minutes. We got Afghani Puff the third from Soulmate Stables. We got Lonesome Ranger from Rinsed Out Racing. Cadillac Boom from Fully in the Chat. That's Valley Happy. We got Blue Lotus from OEB. Lieutenant Rainbow from La Playa Farms. And Sam Silver from Revere Ranch. And I know the owner of Revere Ranch hangs out with us uh, during... I think that's BD Henders, ain't it? Sorry, BD Henders. I always forget. He says, trying to breed a left turf firm horse, so this will be tough. It's soft. LTF is very rare. I've been hearing about that, like certain, and they always say like LTF or RDS. Are there certain ones that are like super rare and certain ones that are super common, Mo? Yeah, I'm actually looking through my DMs because somebody hit me up last week or two weeks ago when we were talking about it. Yeah, there's one breed that's super, super uncommon. Oh, really? So I wonder if people try to uh, cross-breed preferences to try to get that uncommon breed or that uncommon preference. Yeah, I would assume as time goes on. That's the kind of stuff. So it I looks like, like to do RDS. So right, right dirt soft is the lowest. Right dirt soft, the most rare. Interesting. BD Hinder says uh, left turf, left turf firm, also very rare. Now I want to go look to see if I got any left turf firm or right dirt softs. <laughs> I got right dirt firms all around. Left turf soft was left turf. No, left turf firm is what is rare. Yeah, I don't have any of the rare stuff, I don't think. But that's fine. Just as long as they win races. That's all I care. And a lot of those will flip, too, you know, as time goes on. Because, you know, just like uh, BD Henders is trying to do. 
you know, people are going to try to flip their, their preferences and, you know, get into race fields that might not have certain horses in it, you know. I'm wondering what you try, what's, um, how do you do it? Is there a certain strategy if you want to get to a certain preferences? We want to try to get a horse that has like maybe just one star on left if you're trying to turn that to a right turn horse or one star on turf if you're trying to get it to be a, a soft horse. Is that the strategy there? Um, I, would think I mean, maybe... again, I have limited, I have limited testing on that, but my horse that I bred two weeks ago, I believe I flipped it because I had two stars on one to the right, two stars to the left, and it wound up just basically canceling each other out. So I'd imagine if I did it again, I'd be able to kick it the other way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and I was thinking even if you had like a horse that was uh, one star turf, and you wanted to make a soft horse, if you bred it with a horse that had three stars on soft, maybe that would help it flip it, flip the foe towards the soft preference. Very well could. But of course, that's what being in the bait is all about, experimenting with things like that. You got to get good at breeding, learning how breeding works, and that's how you're going to get an edge up to get the racehorses that are going to win you the moolah, the money that's money. Right. All right, guys, it's about race time, y'all. Good luck if you're in this race. I know we got a couple homies in the chat that are in this race. I don't have any bets on this one, but I'm going with Cadillac Boom. Good luck, everybody. All right. Horses are at the gate. It's post time here on Photo Finish Live. Six horse field, they're locked and loaded. And they're rolling here in the Windy City Maiden. And it's Lieutenant Rainbow like a horse at a hill from the outside. And down on the rail, it's Afghani Pup the third who sits in second next to Sam Silver. And it's Blue Lotus in fourth. Cadillac Boom is in fifth. And Lonesome Ranger in sixth, trailing the pack here. As they make their way into the clubhouse turn, this eight furlong affair. We're heading left, we're heading on the turf, and it's sloppy. I know how you kids like them sloppy, but it's Cadillac Boom who now takes the lead over Afghani Puff the third, who sits back in second on the rail. And on the far outside, that's Sam Silver who looks to get going here. And he moves into second in front of Afghani Puff. And it's Blue Lotus who comes on the outside. That's the post time favorite in fourth. Followed by Lieutenant Rainbow in fifth and Lonesome Ranger still trailing the pack. And he's got about 10 to make up now as they make their way down the back stretch. Opening half in 49 and change. They're in no rush, but Sam Silver is in a hurry to take the lead. And he pushes it ahead now by a half a length over Blue Lotus, who's on the inside. And a break of three. That's Cadillac Boom, who's splitting horses at will. And it's Sam Silver's the one to catch as they make their way into the far turn. It's Sam Silver, 99 to 1. But 99 to 1, and they might be done as Blue Lotus and Cadillac Boom challenge for the lead. And it's Cadillac Boom now, kicks clear by two. Cadillac Boom in front. Blue Lotus chases from the outside. Afghani Puff with one more kick from the back, but it's not going to happen today. And it's Tick Tick Cadillac Boom to the wire at 1.94 to 1 over Blue Lotus and Afghani Puff the third. Shout out to the Valley Happy Stable. That's a chat win right there with the Fully who's in the stable. That's the owner of Happy Valley and the winner of that race, Cadillac Boom. And it was a S minus tier horse. I guess there were a few S minus tier horses. And Sam Sam Silver was looking good for an A horse there till the very end. Kind of faded away there. All right, let's see what else we got on the race card tonight. We got a few more races. I know I'm in the last race of the night, pretty sure anyway. We get to these upcoming races. We got the Appalachian Maiden at 8:54. We got my race, the Doctor Sturdy Stakes at 8:59. Let me refresh. I think we're missing some. BD Hunter says, might be done. Nice job, Happy Stables. Maybe a shorter race. Yeah, I was thinking too. It kind of uh, faded at the end, so a shorter race does make sense. Uh, betting is about to close on this race if you want to bet. And I think we did get that Honeycrisp allowance filled up just in time. Good job, guys. It's going to be a four-horse race. This should be interesting. We can go ahead and bet on it. Uh, we only got one minute, but there's only four horses to pick from. We got a couple bees in here. Thanks, Mo, for throwing yours in here. <laughs> I think, uh, oh, you threw both of yours in there. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's going to be. B stands for beat them up. Man, Constellation is going to just 
throw, just gonna crush all of us. Dude, we have no chance against OEB. I think I'm definitely betting. Can I not should I bet on my own horse? What if bad. we team up and we like hip check them off the track? Ooh, you know I like that. that. Me and Moe's horses. Do? Yeah, yeah. Just Teaming like they up. do in NASCAR, shake and bake, yep. baby. <laughs> <laughs> No problem. Fully, congratulations on the win. I got. I guess I got to go with Constellation here. I'm gonna be sad if my own horse beats my bet, but then again, I won't be, because then that means I get a win as well. All right, we're going Constellation across the board. Probably not gonna win much, because I don't think there's any other bets on this, which means that there's nothing in the betting field or in the uh, wagering pool, so you can't really win anything. You'll just win your money back, unless you lose, then they keep your money, right? Yeah, unless you lose, yeah makes sense it makes sense okay okay but if you win you get bragging rights let's go especially if i win against an oeb horse uh with my horse that has never won a race i'm trying to get the full screen set up for the next race in eight minutes and 55 seconds let's see what race that is that is the d gen money made in round four four furlong sprint and we got some horses in this one this is the one that we bet madam george and makaibi ethereal on accident all right, guys, it's eight minutes before that race, so let's go check the marketplace, see if anything's up here for us to grab. Nope, but I'm always keeping my eye on that marketplace. Always checking it out. Always keep it to most recently listed on top, and it updates on its own. So if you have, like, two screens like me, sometimes I'll just throw the marketplace up on the other screen while I'm working, and every once in a while a horse will pop up that I want to buy. If you're new to the game, you can see that after a horse races, it becomes exhausted. And after that, it goes to recovering. So you can't just keep racing them back to back. You don't want to race them until they're fully recovered or they will get injured. And uh, mm -hmm. most horses get just injured all the time for no reason. But they said nah, they, Not since the update. They Ever since they that. patched that update and they announced that I haven't had an injury yet, but knock on wood. Man, what should I, what should I name my horse, Mo? You got any good horse names for me? Somebody said hashtag soon. I kind of like that. <laughs> but that means it's going to lose every time because it's, <laughs> it's, if it's hashtag soon, that's going to be last place. Hmm. Let's I mean, see. I'm just thinking of, you know, like what's a line of horses? Like a, you want to create like a lineage, you know what I'm saying? See, I was thinking about that. I wanted to name one of my horses Professor X and then just have like a bunch of Marvel characters as the lineage. And then maybe at some point get into some DC horses if I bring one in from uh, the market. There you go. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Quick self, uh, you should have, like, you should call your horse, like, um, no, 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 maybe the gate. I was thinking of something gate wise. <laughs> horse <Negated>. gate. <laughs> horse gate. Horse gate would be funny. I could name uh, it Phoenix, Rogue. I could go that Marvel route. I like the idea of naming my horses after real horses that I've bet on in the past. You know, a lot of those Triple Crown winners, like the first horse I ever bet on was Winning Collars. That's one of my favorites. But that name, uh, when I try to make it, I think they give you a message saying that you can't use names that are in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah, and me and my uncle have that problem because, you know, me and him playing horses together for so long. We we're going to call a horse, you know, Uncle Mo. <laughs> but... Technically, you know, because Uncle went and Mo, but we're going to do it Uncle Knows instead. But, yeah, just because hey, Uncle Mo is a Hall of Fame horse or whatever. Top tier breed, even though they don't win me any money. But We're not going to be using that name that was suggested in the chat. So is that, um, <laughs> is Uncle Knows, is that the name of a horse that's actually in the Hall of Fame? No, Uncle Mo is a really good top tier breed. It's like a $225,000 stud fee. Oh, I see. But yet, I've never seen those horses win. They always take second for me. But, uh, <laughs> <figures>. you know. <laughs> yeah, a couple Place more. <laughs> a couple more of my favorite horses from all time. Of course, I loved Cigar, and I was big on Lost in the Fog. I don't know if you guys know all these horses. They were, like, Lost in the Fog was undefeated for the longest time, and then he went against Invasor, and I watched that race live. That was a big showdown. I think Invasor ended up winning. Do you remember any of those horses, or is that just a Kentucky Derby thing? Uh, yeah, I don't really follow many of them. Gotcha, it must just be, a, it's it's a Louisville thing, y'all. I'm from the yeah. Louisville area. Actually, um, I probably told this story a hundred times already, though, but I used to work on in Churchill Downs on Sky Terrace, which is known as Millionaire's Row, every derby week, every year. Uh, usually about two weeks a year, we'd do the uh, celebrity luncheon. And we see lots of uh, lots of celebrities. We saw Rick Pitino pretty much every year, who is the coach for the Louisville Cardinals, big celebrity around here. But like Larry Flint, if you like Hustler Magazine, I've waited on Larry Flint 
and his gold wheelchair. If you saw the uh, the Larry Flint versus the U.S. movie that Woody Harrelson was in, it was pretty cool to meet him. Name Fast yeah, Break. Sick. I like that. I like that name a lot. Fast Break. I think I might go ahead and take Journey from the Palace. He's feeling lucky tonight. Anyway, he got his first win. Let's go ahead and name this horse Fast Break if it's not taken. And you can uh, branch off of that, start a lineage of uh, basketball-related terms for your horses. There we go, fast break. Remember, you can only name your horse once. Once you named it, it you cannot change it. So make sure you like your name before you do it. Uh, so I don't know why somebody named this horse a park TS. It was already named when I bought it. I would change it if I could. Yeah, sometimes that happens. But, but sometimes uh, that happened to me in Zed Run, too. Sometimes... It, it's it brings the value down for a good horse i traded a todd mcfarlane batman at the time it was worth 500 gems i traded that for a uh finny zed run horse named rainbow sparkles and the dude was like i let my daughter uh name the horse and now i don't like running it anymore because it's called rainbow <laughs> sparkles and man that horse was like my best horse that horse was awesome i got a steal of a deal on that one <laughs> rainbow sparkles i love it Gotta love Rainbow Sparkles. Yeah, I still remember that horse. All right, Mo, let's check the news tab. I really never checked the news tab on the Photo Finish Live website. Uh, they're talking about this Road to the Third Time Derby. We are checking it. Earlier, you guys can actually get into some of these races if you have horses that you think are strong enough to get into this derby series that they have every season, which during the beta means every week. You can right now go ahead and start registering. Registering it looks like only one horse registered so far for this Grade Three Dunham Stakes, and that will earn some points toward the end of the weeks, the end of the seasons Derby race. All right, let's see what else is happening in the news section. Let's keep our clock up here so we know what time we got. We got three minutes. Ah, Mo, sorry, Mo, I accidentally blanked you out there for a second. I right, only got a couple good. minutes. Uh, Racer's Edge providing data and analytical analytical tools to Photo Finish Live community. If you guys uh, haven't found the Racer's Edge website yet and you want to learn more about uh, what horses to invest in, more about the game, and definitely when you're looking at the market, you always want to check this Racer's Edge website. I'm going to link it in the chat so you guys can bookmark it if you're just getting into the game because that's going to be a resource that you want to use as much as possible. Yeah, it just makes everything easier. Like I said, you'll see, especially when you're buying like Gen Zero horse tickets, you know, on uh, Magic Eden. It's it'll allow you to see all the matches and the, the amount of boost, you know, the preference boost too. Uh, again, more information you just won't see anywhere else. So, yeah, and before you buy useful. one, you want to learn about those boosts. That's a very important part of the whole process. Um, whenever those PFPs matched up when they created the tickets, it gives them extra boost to their stats. And you're going to want to know all about that information before you put some money into buying one of those tickets off the Solana blockchain. And you get those on the Magic Eden Marketplace. All right, let's check out the horses in this Maiden Sprint. Uh, this one is not a juvenile, but you're probably going to have a lot of two-year-old horses, two horses in it. Four furlongs, so it's a super sprint. It's going to be a fast race. You got Maccabi Ethereal from Solanite Stables. We got the sequel from Wolof the Bandito. We got Rainbow Oscar from La Playa Farms. AW and Oceanside 1 from Premier Stables. Madam George from Secretariat Stables. I think I got a bet. Yeah, I got a bet on Madam George across the board. Win, place, or show. We got Boudica from Mickwacky Racers. Fancy Weight from RVA. Gift from GVT Wimbledon. You got Shaka from Golden Stables. Summer Nights from Sweet 60. Morning Wind from Big Brain Stables. And Psychedelic Sid from Mickwacky Racers. If you didn't follow, if you didn't watch the stream uh, last night, then you might not know. But there's a new feature now in the game where you can actually enter more than one of your own horses from the same stable into the same race. So that's why you see uh, some of these stables have more than one horses. Like Mick Wacky has more than one horse in this race. That's a thing you can do now if you want to race your horses against each other. And we were talking about yesterday how that sometimes that can be a good way to uh, find out which horses. I mean, it's, it's a good way to compare horses. Like, if you know this horse can win a grade one race and you race your horse against your own horse and your horse beats your horse that won a grade one race, now you know this other horse has the ability to possibly win a grade one race. So some people will use that to judge their horses. All right, guys, it's race time. Good go. luck if you're in this race. Here we go.
All right, race fans. Beautiful night here. It's Saturday night at the races with Vault and Mo. Appreciate you guys hanging out. Horses are at the gate. It's post time. 12 horse field. Full house. Everywhere you look. And away they go in the DJ Money Maiden race four. From in between, it's Fancy Wade who darts out to the lead. Down on the rail, that's the sequel, followed by Morning Wind on the outside. And comes Madam George and the Gift in fifth. And it's Psychedelic Sid in sixth here with about seven to make up from the leader as they head into the clubhouse turn. And it's opening quarter and 22 and change. They are cruising into the turn. And it's the sequel now who digs in as they already head for home. Blinking, it's over. The sequel on the inside now challenged by Madam George on the outside. And it's now sequel who digs back in the second. And coming down on the rail, that's Maccabi Ethereal with a late run. But it's not going to catch him today. It's going to be Madam George taking it home over Maccabi Ethereal and Gift. 518, your order of finish. It was a nice battle there for second place, but that first place horse won convincingly. That's the S plus horse, and he lived yeah. up to his ranking there. Madam George from Secretary at Stables gets the win. Let's see if we won any uh, horseshoe from our bet there. We'll get the next race keyed up first. See how long we got to the next. Oh, I think we got another race starting right now, bro. Honey Chris Allowance, you ready? Yep. All right. Good luck. Alrighty. Just when you think it's over, ladies and gentlemen. But wait, there's more. Order now, get a second race for free. Four horse field, locked and loaded, and away they go here in the Honey Crisp Allowance. And it's Taya out of the vaulted Bigfoot Barn. Heads out to the lead at 18 to 1. And it's Natty Light, Silver, and Constellation who runs along in third. And you ought to know is in fourth here with about five to make up. As they make their way onto the back stretch in this six furlong affair, heading left on the turf, it's a good track today, and the opening quarter in 24 and 1. And it's Natty Light Silver now pokes a nose in front over Constellation. And just like that, Constellation now takes the lead, and it's Taya who now pulls along on the outside and challenges for second. You ought to know, looks for room on the rail, and now battles their way into third. But as they start to make their way around the far turn, it's Constellation showing their dominance here over the field and starts to kick clear by three. Hits the top of the stretch, heading for home, 200 to go. Constellation now leads by a country mile. And if you look, you might see a little object there in the rearview mirror. That's Natty Light Silver who runs along in second. And it's 100 meters to go, and they're off the screen, but they're still there. It's Constellation taking it home over Natty Light Silver and Taya. The first blowout of the night. That horse won by, like Mo said, Yeesh. a country mile. But yeah, wow, yeah. that was. I was proud to get a huh? second place there. My horse never finished in the top money before. So, shout out to uh, Mo for putting two horses in there, some B tier horses that I could actually beat up on a little bit, and I was able to get a second place out of that. We got another race coming up tonight. We got a Grade One to end the race uh, to end the night off. Let's see if there's any races in between there. Sometimes, like I said, you got to refresh to make sure you see all the races. That's going to be the last race it. of the night. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be this Dr. Sturdy Stakes. We can go ahead and bet on this race. Let's see how much time. We got six minutes. So we got plenty of time to analyze. This is the race with my Swamp Thing in it. That's my best horse. Well, that's my real horse, my horse that I own the ticket for. Um, but I don't expect it to do it too great. Uh, it's a sloppy track, and he's a firm horse. Looks like we got a couple. We got a lot of firm horses. We got a soft here. Treshin might have a little bit of an advantage here as a soft a horse that prefers the soft turf or the soft um, surface. Maccabi Zipping, also a soft horse, and Smite Line from Journey from the Palace in here with a soft horse as well. <clears throat> we got a lot of firm horses on a sloppy track. That's not good. Let's check Angry Kick and see if they ran. Oh, this, these are all horses that never ran before. It'd be nice if these were horses that had ran before and you could see how they perform on sloppy tracks despite having a firm preference. You can go back and look at their parents, although the parents would probably prefer the firm surface, too. Here's you could go back them. and go back and look at the parents. That's a good idea. I might do that, too, actually, on a few of these. Uh, here's the Salita horse. You can see it's ran on sloppy. It prefers firm. And you can see when it runs on soft, it's getting 10 out of 10, 6 out of 7, 10 out of 10, 8 out of 10. So I don't think this horse is going to be very effective on the soft turf. But you can see when he runs good, he gets some pretty good finishes. 
but that's not going to be the horse I bet on for sure. And like Mo said, you can go back and check some of these parents. I think Angry Kick was one I wanted to check out. Go into the bloodline here. It's a Tony Rigatoni horse. Let's see what the fairest in the land is a horse <laughs> that prefers firm. And let's see if it raced any on sloppy soft. It got a second place in a 12 furlong soft race here, but there's only five horses in it. It was a stakes race, though. Six of nine on this other soft horse, or the soft race. I don't know. I think I'm going to go with a horse that prefers... I think I'll go with a horse that prefers soft. We got Treshin from OEB. We know OEB is a good stable. We got the Journey from the Palace's horse, Smite Line, and we got Maccabi Zipping. That's kind of like the three horses I want to key in on right now. Let's go down here and look at Smite Line. Running for the first time. Check the Bloodline. Coming from an S- minus and an A-. minus. So you got a pretty good, decent breed out of that. Uh, let's see what Flea does. Flea likes it on the soft turf. It has some pretty good finishes here. Let's see what the the daddy horse likes. Let me go back to Smite Line. My bad. Went back too far there. We're going to go to the Bloodline. We're going to check out Nicholas Goffer. Nicholas Goffer likes soft as well. And has some pretty good speed ratings here at S-minuses for an A-tier horse. This horse might surprise some people in this race. We got Maccabi zipping. It is an S-tier horse. Never raced before. Bloodline. We got an S-plus horse that it's coming off of. And an S-horse with five wins, which is pretty good. Prefers soft. S-plus speed. Let's see what the daddy looks like. Whoa. S-plus speed. S-minus. -S On the stamina. S-plus finish. That's an expensive horse, my friends. <laughs> All right, I don't know. I kind of like that horse. It's looking pretty strong. <clears throat> Let's see what the other one was. It was Treshin, this S minus horse from OEB Stables, also racing for the first time, coming from an A and an S tier horse, the Ancient A tier horse. Uh, only ran four times. Got a win though. Let's see what that wins on on soft turf and on the th other three races. It was running on good. So really, this horse could be better than its stats show. It's only ran on one soft surface. Let's check out Trace Lachis or whatever. Hmm, what Trace do you think about Lach. I don't know, how would you yeah. pronounce that? Trace Lachis? Isn't that a dessert? Trace, Trace Lachis or something like Trace Lachis? Maybe some expensive dessert Trace I've Lachis? never been able to afford. Oh, that's right. We always, my girl always gives me a hard time about this one like <laughs> Master Chef. How was it pronounced? Master Trace Leches. Leches. I can't even say it when she freaking pronounced Leches. it to me. Leches. Trace Leches. Journey is thinking about buying a ticket <laughs> off of the Magic Eden. Maybe we should try to help him to pick a horse. Let's go ahead and pick our horse for this one. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with the horse that's soft and has the highest stars on their soft rating. This one's one and a half. This one's one and a half, and this one's a half. I gotta go with Journey here. Journey already won a horse or won a race today. I'm getting twenty to one odds. Might be a long shot, but I do like the fact that it prefers the soft turf and we're running sloppy. Let's go with Journey across the board. Even if he comes in third, could possibly win something, win a little bit of profit, since he has such uh such high odds. Or such low odds, depending on uh, how you say it. I, you actually have to go down and click the horse every time. Something I've gotta get used to here. <laughs> Yeah, I was actually just doing the same thing. And I wonder if uh, if anybody's ever put in suggestions, just have like a WPS button to play 500 across the board, you know? Just do a one play show and one shot. Yeah, I like that. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. You got one minute left to get in there and to get your bets in. Keep my eye on the marketplace. If anybody wants to throw up, anybody in the chat wants to throw up some horses on the marketplace for some of the homies in the chat to grab. Let us know ahead of time and we'll tell everybody to go there. And usually when that happens, it's whoever the first one to click on and click by is, is the one who gets it. I wouldn't mind throwing out this um, Natty Light Horse if anybody wants it. I could put that up on on the market. It's an A- though. I don't know if anybody wants it. I put it up for like five bucks if anybody wants it. Five horse or five derby. Palace from the Journey says, I haven't checked back prices. Yeah, they need the WPS for sure. That would make it easier. Yeah, we got 10 minutes. We can check out Magic Eden. And the thing I was talking about a second ago is something that you definitely want to be looking at when you're trying to decide to decide which tickets to buy. And that's looking at the matches that the PFPs have. Mo knows more about it. Uh, let's get in here and let's sort. Actually, let's do, um, what's that website that I just suggested? Racer's Edge. <laughs> Racer's Edge, yeah. Let's go into Racer's Edge. This is the website you should probably use when you're trying to determine 
uh, which horse to pick up. If you go in here and click horses, you can actually uh, filter out the ones that are for sale. So now you got all the ones that are for sale. You got them as the highest grade up top, and you can see the prices right here. Um, I mean, if you only if it's going to be your first ticket, it makes a lot of sense to get a filly. Me and Mo were talking about this last week with fillies. Of course, if you breed them, you get to keep the baby horse. But if you have a colt, if you have a stallion, which turns into a stallion, if you have a male horse, you have to put it up to the stud on the stud farm for a stud fee. You get fees for it, but you don't get to keep those horses. So if you want to expand your stable, you got to have female horses so they can have the babies. Yep. All right, you got S minuses here for 112. You got an S minus here for 73. But of course, the fillies are going to be more expensive for that particular reason. Let's look at some of the fillies that aren't too expensive. I don't know how much is 260. So that's uh, it's, uh, that that is pricey, my friend. Um, All right, maybe that's super expensive. Even with Solana taking a nosedive, I think it's back down to like 14. But yeah, that's that's still pricey. Gotcha, gotcha. Let's keep on looking. Yeah. Hey, what is that? It's like 2,800, almost three grand. Wow, what about 38? Oh, that's a coat. You got an A-plus coat here for 38 Solana. Like I said, though, you want a Philly. Let's look for Phillies a little bit. 88 for an A-plus Philly. Might be the best deal. There's a S-minus Philly for 90. Let's look at this S. Once again, I feel like I need to go in here and... I always just use this crypto currency calculator anytime I'm trying to figure out with anything, even when I'm looking at OMI tokens, even when I'm looking at Ethereum, this just makes <laughs> it easy. All right, how much is this one? Uh, 90? I know it's going to be a lot, but this is, we're looking at S minus. We're looking at some of the top type horses. Yeah, that's a thousand bucks for an S minus. So let's look for something that's more like an A plus Philly, but it's not like super expensive and see what kind of matches they have. Let's see if it's worth buying. We got seven minutes before the next race. We got a grade one race to end off the night. We got VB Arcade in the chat. What's up, VB Arcade? Dope video post. Ah, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. I'm working by listening. I have no idea. Yeah, everybody knows VB Arcade. He's got a great YouTube channel. If you guys are VB collectors, make sure you're subscribed to that. Uh, we're we're learning about the horses. Photo finish live NFT horse racing on the Solana blockchain, and we're talking to Journey from the Palace about buying one of these actual NFT horses because right now we're in beta and a lot of the horses that we own aren't real horses they'll be reset at the end of the beta but you can still buy real horses i own one myself my own several and uh like i said journey's thinking about buying one and we're looking at fillies because fillies are the ones you want because that's how you build your stable let's see how much <coughs> you can sort it on the top too by the way oh yeah i probably should have done that huh 35 solana is a 434 dollars you got an a tier philly here just out of curiosity let's see if uh we can get the information on this one when Dan Crawler's What's cool too is when you look at the uh, the information here, <clears throat> it'll say purchase and then it'll say find in game beta. You can you know go right to the Magic Eden post if you want to, you know price it out there, or you can go right to the actual horse ticket in the game, and see you know how the horse has been running. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know you could. So this is that horse. It's called Stormbound. The owner retired it, Golden Goose Stable, so they could start breeding it. And you can see it only ran two races, so you don't get a lot of information from it. The fleet figures, though, you can see that. And then you can check the progeny to see how its babies are doing. But it hasn't bred yet either. It's just retired. It's not doing nothing with this horse. Yeah, hmm. I don't think the progeny tab is functioning yet, but I'm hoping to see oh, that working. Coming uh, soon, gotcha. Very soon, yeah, soon, soon, TM. You can always just go to Golden Goose Stables. You can see the foe right here. If you want to look at some of the foes that this horse has bred out, that's cool. I didn't know you could actually go into the game that way. And then yeah, I'll... yeah. And sometimes you'll get a 505 error. Uh, if you get that, that just means that horse actually hasn't been redeemed in version two, uh, which could be good and bad. I mean, it could be a you know diamond in the rough or it could be a bust, you know. But you'll have no data to work with. Plus, also should mention if you are going to purchase a horse right now. They will be eight years old, so it's not like you buy it today and it's two years old. Like, it's already aging. It'll be eight years old. It'll be ready to retire, which I think I texted you earlier, Vault. Um, I was wrong on that. You can race when you're eight. No one ever corrected me. So. Oh, really? Makes me wonder if people actually listen when I talk. But uh, <laughs> I was under the assumption when you hit eight years old that you retired. But I'm still able to race Rainmaker and these guys for one more week. Uh, whether or not I will, I don't know yet, but 
So that's different from version one then, right? I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't around. That's why I said I, I was just going by what people were saying, like retire is at eight. So I guess you race until eight and then they'll auto retire next season. Maybe. I don't remember. It's been a while because I know I remember I bought a horse, like a really good horse, but I bought it like one day before it retired and I didn't realize that until after I bought it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did that when I first got involved too. I, it might be nine. Maybe somebody in the chat will know. But yeah, that's the stuff you're looking for whenever you're trying to decide which horse you want to buy. Let's look at some cheaper horses real quick. Um, you can but tell if you though, do buy a horse, <clears throat> sorry, if you do buy a horse, you can redeem it. You know, at least test out the breeding. You know, get, get some some information on it. Because all the breeding we do now is going to be free, obviously. So it's it's free testing for when it's real money. Yeah, some of these aren't expensive at all. You can get an A tier ticket for eighty six bucks. It's a colt. But man, I saw that it was like seven Solana right now, right? Yeah, yeah, eighty six bucks. That's not bad at all. Let's look what, at it what are the stats bit. on it? I didn't really look at it too much. It's got one for start, one for speed, two for stamina, zero for finish, zero for heart, and zero for temper. Yeah, that's a tough sell. I mean, it's got one and a half stars, one star, so zero how's it and a half. In a, I mean, then? Well, it's just the way the tickets were bred. Uh, again, I wasn't around for the PFP breeding, but what I heard was that some people really calculated the breeding and other people just had no clue and really burned some good tickets so oh i see that's what i heard gotcha yeah i probably would have had no clue i'd have to learn a little bit about it before i started putting some money into it that's what we're trying to do right now here's a philly right here that's an a tier philly 38 solana so that would cost you 471 bucks pretty expensive then and it's got a two on start one on speed one on stamina two on finish and the rankings there are between one and three right mower is at one and five Yep, one and three. One and three, so that's not bad. A two on start and two on finish. Start and finish seem to be the most important, followed by speed. But, of course, I'm a noob, and that's just uh, what I can tell so far, it seems like, are the most important stats. But the horse has a one on heart and a zero on temper. And, I mean, it really does appear that those stats are important, man. The heart, you know what I'm saying, is that determination down the stretch. It looks like that the temper is, you know, how does it react against all the horses in, in certain spaces or whatever. It does seem to matter. I'll, I'll definitely give it that. So, Yeah, absolutely. Are you going to try to focus in on any particular stats whenever you're breeding? Um, whenever you have a horse that you're trying to breed out, you got a mare, and it's got S plus on the speed. It's got S on the uh, finish, and it's got maybe S minus on the temper. Do you try to focus on breeding it with another horse with S plus, for example, on the speed? Or are you trying to uh, bump up some of your stats that are lower, like your S minus temper, and trying to breed it with a horse that has maybe S plus temper so you can get that up? I mean, you kind of have to just go with your, whatever you have to work with, you know? Yeah, if you I'm have just... a horse that's if you have a horse that's shooting out like my Motown horse for instance right it's an A plus horse but it has an S minus speed because of the boost from the ticket right oh, nice yeah yeah so for me I know that horse is a sprinter so for me to try to make that a marathon horse is stupid it's a sprinting male I should just find another female with a good sprint maybe you know a little stamina right and just have something that can just fly out the gate and try to win like a four or five for a long affair right I mean that's Kind of, you just got again, kind of have to go with whatever I have. I can't turn that into a, a stamina marathon horse. It would take way too many breeds and in real life, in the real game, that would take way too much money. Probably like a thousand bucks, maybe more. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's kind of like focusing on what your horse is already good at, right? Yeah, but if you're just coming in and you're buying tickets, I mean, yeah, obviously think about how you want to approach it. I didn't, I didn't really know too much. I was like, oh, cool, this horse is cheap and everything else. And I'm like, oh, wait. It's got very little matches, you know, and then I paid the price early on. Right. But thankfully, Rainmakers paid the bill, so I'm not really too That's mad about good. it. <laughs> good stuff. You know, but, and HRO, actually. HRO failed yeah. me out. Really? I did all right with Hero 2, selling my cards uh, on eBay when I first got the first box, but after that, I haven't been much into it. Well, I pulled the Epic Joker, right? Oof, and then yeah. that thing went to like 4Gs, and I held it thinking cause that was like my first big score, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, cool. Watched it crash. Still own it. You Back up to like over five hundred. Yeah, but then I pulled the mythic out of the the hybrid, nice. and it was like a number fifty two mint, and I sold it. The hybrid and the physical, I mailed it to the guy for like sixteen hundred. So oh my goodness, that's awesome! Congratulations, that's good stuff. Well, other than that, everything else has been a bust. <laughs> You've been doing good on those DC comics too, flipping those. All right, guys, it's race time. It's time for the last race of the night, the Grade One race. Good luck if you're in it. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, 
last race of the night here on Saturday Night at the Races. We appreciate you guys hanging out. It's post time. 12 horse field there in the gate. And away they go here in the Doctor's Sturdy Stakes. And it's Treshawn who shoots out to the lead from the inside. And it's Karistal followed by Chileno about four wide on the track. And on the far outside, it's Smite Line in fourth. And Swamp Thing now moves up in from fifth. And it's Porsche Boom in sixth at 13 to 1. And they're all chasing the leader here around to the opening turn. It's the YSM runner, 99 to 1. It's Karistal who leads the way by two over Swamp Thing out of the vault. And it's Smite Line now, starts to get going here on the outside, and now it's Nesquik who's cutting them out and goes right to the lead. Nesquik at 99 to 1, it means business. And now hits the top of the stretch and they're heading for home. It's Nesquik trying to hold on here, but Porsche Boom from in between horses takes the lead. And now it's even further back, it's Maccabi zipping. And it's Maccabi zipping three across the track. Final 100 meters to the wire. It's Maccabi on the outside and Porsche Boom on the inside. And it's Porsche Boom. Boom! To the wire over Maccabi Zipping and Slope Streak. There's a photo finish for you. A photo finish and a grade one race to end Damn. the night. Shout out to Valley Happy in the chat. That's a chat room winner right there. Congratulations on the grade one win. There he is, fully. Let's go. Winner there. And my horse, I'm pretty sure, got dead <laughs> last. He was looking good for a second. I was like, what's happening? And then he went back to where he belonged. All right, that was a hell of a race, but uh, yeah, I think your horse is just outclassed. I yeah. mean, I know you probably just threw him in there to, to have him race on stream, but exactly, I, there was no weight differences. I mean, that horse is again probably fit for like an allowance race or a handicap or something, you know? Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, journey, your journey from the palace, your horse was looking pretty good too. It's also out of class here, going up against a lot of S and S minus tier horses. Before an A tier horse, it was leading the pack for a second, and it ended up beating this A plus Serico horse. So not a bad showing at all. All right, guys, that was the last race of Saturday night at the races. We appreciate you. Bo and I appreciate you guys for hanging out with us for race nights. We'll be live again next week for Friday and Saturday night, once again, starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And hopefully next race, or next week, we'll have some of our horses in that derby, that, uh, what's it called, third time derby race? Probably not, but you never know. I'm going to get That's my That's the plan, <laughs> bro. We're going to get you, you know, we're going to get you hooked up. Like I said, we'll get everybody in chat, too. Again, if you guys need horses, hit up Vault, hit me up, uh, jump in his Discord, we'll get him sent out to you guys. I'm pretty sure we have a bunch still to give away, so. Yep. Appreciate Here's you guys in the know, chat. Guys. Yeah, yeah. If you need a horse, let us know. Any of the new people who need a horse, or if you just maybe you only have one, you need a second horse, hit me up on Twitter. Hit up Mo Knows at Mo Knows with a Z at the end on Twitter. And uh, Journey from the Palace, I would say it's probably not a smart move to mint tomorrow, but there are only 616 editions, so I could be wrong. All right, guys, thank you for hanging out with us. Mo, great job on calling the races tonight. Thank you, my man, for doing the stream with me. And we will Hell all yeah, see you guys next week. Later, homies. Later, guys.